Hey everybody, welcome back to Terps Esports. This is Lily, joined with... Uh, I'm Tomas. And today we actually have Lotus in the first time in the studio, which is really exciting. We have an NECC matchup against Pace University today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, this is, I believe, their first time in the studio. So this is going to be the first time we're going to see uh, their marvelous skills uh, on the big screen today. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah, it's, I'm definitely excited to see what this team is able to bring to the studio. And to get things started for you guys, we actually have a quick clip to show um, from this team's gameplay. So let's jump right into that. Yeah. We're so good. That's good. More smooth. But, uh... I'm not flashing hey, inside, okay? You can peek out. When they tap, I'm tap flashing. Yeah, yeah. One enemy remaining. Nice! No. nice. nice. Let's go. Yeah. Reloading. We're so good. Yeah, so I think, you know, we're going to see a lot of teamwork today if that clip showed us anything. There's a lot of you know, cohesion within this team. They play really well together, um, like we just saw in that clip, especially in, you know, 2v2 situations like yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. There was just so much trust between them. You could see uh, they they both waited until uh, and, until they got the flash. Nobody jumped the gun. They waited for the tap, and then they just they just went for it, and they were able to clean up the round. So, yeah, great stuff from them. Yeah, and we're actually are going to bring in Trace for an interview uh, so we can get a little bit better. But first, we have yet another clip to show you guys before she comes in. Great stuff there, Trace. <laughs> Now, I have to ask, how does it feel to be in the studio for the first time with the team? Oh, uh, it's like such an amazing experience because like I've never had this experience before and I just like it to play with my teammates in person. So it's so cool. Yeah, I must be. And how do you feel heading into this match? Is there anything specific you guys are planning to bring into this game against Pace? Um, we've just been like trying out new strats, but mostly keeping it the same, and I'm actually very excited for today's match because I feel like we could put up a good fight. Yeah, I know. We're definitely excited, too, to watch it. And jumping into some more fun questions here, give me your best Valorant hot take. Oh, my God. Uh, my best Valorant hot take would be that Fracture is one of the best maps, in my really, opinion. Really? Yeah. Really? I've, I've heard that around, so I think you're not alone, but... <laughs> Definitely not a Fracture person myself. And lastly, if you had to take a vacation to any Valorant map, which map would you choose? I would say Breeze, because I like the beach, but personally I would never play Breeze because <laughs> I hate the map so much. That's valid. Well, thank you so much for stopping in today for a quick interview. I wish you the best of luck in today's match, and we're really excited to have you in the studio. Thank you. So catch us back after this quick commercial break to head into the game. I think by the end of the season, like now, we've all just, we play together, everyone kind of jokes around a little bit more and kind of shines their natural ray. We're excited just to see them play better as well. With the middle school program, the best part has been seeing the, the moments of teamwork where the, the middle schoolers really seem to get the game. And so that's when you can see they're starting to get a little bit hooked on how esports can be it's so fun. Game or will red turn things around? Turb Adventures take flight at Stamp, host to countless Maryland events, programs, performances, and more. Feed your body, feed your mind, feed your soul. Let your talents soar, dance, sing, perform, find your thing. Join more than 800 student organizations and clubs. Find community here. Leadership lives here. 
art thrives here. With space to grow, we're all just kids at heart. Let your imagination fly. Compete. Play. With wings on our feet. Here, your spirit can fly. Here, your soul lifts up. Here, you remember those who came before. This is STAM. This is the center for campus life, where Terp adventures take place. You belong here. Come fly with us. Welcome back, guys. We are almost ready to head into the very first game of the series against Pace. Um, we have some sort of idea of what maps we're playing. It's we're, we're a little confused. Yeah, I'm not sure the order. We're gonna we're we're gonna see some split today. We right. might see some bind if it goes to a game three, and we'll probably see some ascent as well. So, who knows when? It's a little surprise for you guys. <laughs> yeah, we those are our three maps we are playing today. Um, we are not yet sure which side UMD has opted for on either of those maps. But I am really excited to see Ascent. Um, that's my favorite map. And I huh. think I, I heard some of the players talking about playing KJ. And I think that's a great pick for Ascent. Yeah, absolutely. I, I personally, I'm more of a bind person. So I'm, you know, I, don't, I, can't, I can't say I'm rooting against uh, UMD, but... I mean, I hope we go to a game three. I hope we get a nice, exciting set. You can see uh, the players here. They're, uh, we're going to be getting into this game any second now. And they just look excited. They do. The energy was really good in the studio. They all seemed really excited to be here for the first time because we yeah. have streamed quite a few Lilac games. This is our very first Lotus game, which is our other Game Changers roster. And I'm excited for them to be here. I know they're excited. And I think a little, as we get into the game, it'll be about working off those nerves a little bit because I think there might be some nerves. But regardless, this is going to be a fun matchup. Yeah, we can see you can see how uh, in those clips that we were showing how well the teams can play with each other, or the team can play with it, uh, with them uh, with each other. But uh, it, if those nerves aren't there, like that's when you get those hero plays. That's when you get like one person just going in, and uh, and you lose the cohesion. So. They just need to play what they've been doing and make sure that they're just playing regimented and together. And here we are on split. And players are currently in agent select. It'll be interesting to see who opts to play what on either side. Yeah, so uh, we're, we're looking for the raise uh, from that uh, pace side, which I'm actually really excited for. Uh, raise, one of my favorite heroes, uh, one of my favorite agents. And... Whenever we see Rays in this game, it's always like explosive, <laughs> uh, no pun intended, explosive uh, executes. And at least personally, getting those grenade kills is just so satisfying. So I'm really excited if we can, uh, if we'll be able to uh, see some of that. Yeah, and do I see all five Lotus players hovering Yoru? <laughs> um. You know, Dusty can't be, uh, the, of course, the coach uh, for this UMD team. Uh, might be panicking a little bit, getting <laughs> a, a sweating. I mean, at least the team's having a good time. But um, you know, I'm curious what's going on over there. Maybe, maybe they just, maybe they're just having a little laugh. They are. I'm sure they're just having a little laugh. But um, <laughs> on the pace side of things, it looks like they have opted for the raise. Uh, Chamber actually, which I think is a really strong pick on a, on split, um, and we haven't really seen him be played all that often uh, in these streams. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you see those those long angles, especially on uh, on that B when you're just uh, sitting in screens all the way in the back. Or uh, like Heaven, this is one of the few maps where there is a Heaven on both sites. So, um, so you can really just throw the chamber anywhere you want, and he'll be able to get some long angle, and he'll have the opportunity to get those just those clean one-shot headshots. Yeah, and I think we were having some issues in Agent Select. There might be a slight pause before we actually are able to get into the game. Um, but I do know that the 
the suspense is building on <laughs> either side, I'm sure, right now. Yeah, I mean, we uh, some of the suspense is gone. We now know Split <laughs> is going to be our first map. Uh, but, uh, I mean, overall, the suspense is higher. Wondering, what's going on with the uh, with the Euros from, uh, from uh, UMD? Yeah, it would be interesting to see if even at least one of them decides to actually pick Yoru. Uh -huh. I don't think so, but... Yeah, I... <laughs> I mean, I would never consider it, but who knows? Maybe they know, they know something we don't. That's why they're over there, and we're we're <laughs> we're in this little we're in here. Yeah, so I'm not sure if the pace players actually were able to lock in or not. I know we did briefly see a chamber, um, and I think we're actually heading into the game right now. It does look like okay. they went with a chamber and a gecko, which an arena. Wow, yeah. this pace team is going for quite a unorthodox comp. Yeah, very very aggressive. They don't have. Do they have zero controllers, or okay, I guess they have the or, or sentinels. I mean, they have the they have the chamber, but it's still a very fast team coming out from pace compared to. I mean, you see that Killjoy, and you see the double initiators the, uh, from the UMD side. Uh, just, I think that UMD should be uh, much more capable of controlling the pace of the game, both speeding it up and slowing it down. While pace can only they only really have the option to step on the gas. Uh, yeah, I think you're exactly right. And pace is attack, which is definitely um, a thing to note here, considering their composition. And it does look like they're going to opt towards B site. Pretty slow to start things out. UMD is pretty evenly split amongst all sites. Yeah, Tra uh, you can see actually Tracy uh, trying to get a, a bunch of... Uh, able to get a bunch of control on that mid side. Almost makes it to the, the spawn doors of, uh, of pace, but opts to just back up and... It looks like she's going to take the 1v1 again. Oh, beautiful shots. Able to find that raise right off the bat. That's a huge detriment to that attacking core of pace as they're making their execute onto B site. Yeah, exactly right. Great pick from Trace and amazing picks from Toxic, but is not able to find the third. But certainly, she had a big role in slowing things down on the pace side. And now, pace has to decide if they want to pick up this bomb and rotate or stick towards B. Yeah, so they're down to the zero, look, uh, down two to three. It looks like they're going to go for the plant now, but uh, UMD ha should have plenty of utility to find their way out the site. Able to able to use that sky dog to find both uh, both members of pace remaining, and we're gonna see uh, flashes coming out, a bunch of util, and uh, he actually teleport uh, the chamber teleports into that, and UMD is going to be able to take the first round. Yeah, Trace cleans it up. I think finding two with a single bullet. I know we didn't get the view on. Her. On that, on those two kills, it looks like it was a collat kill. So huge round from Trace. To yeah, I off. didn't even know that you could collateral with the classic. Oh, I think she had a sheriff. Was it a sheriff? I okay, if so. it's a sheriff, then that makes sense. I thought I thought it was a classic, but I mean, great, yeah, great stuff, from, uh, great stuff from Tracy. Able to get a triple on that round. Great way to start off this match. Yeah, huge round for her, and it looks like she is opting to go mid once again because it really did pay off last time. But on the pace side. Looking like they are actually split up hey, this time. Nice probably trying thing. to opt for a fake or at least uh, show some mid presence. Yeah, they're uh, they're certainly trying to get more control of this map. Last round, they sent one person mid, but otherwise they just tried to barrel to garage, and that didn't work out for them. So they're 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 just gonna slow down this round. And uh, looks like they are gonna be able to get a, a bunch of mid control. A little bit of a, a dangerous peak coming out from dark, but he's able. But they're able to get that um, that grenade into that. Uh, that be heaven, and now they're they're pushing their way to vents very quickly. They are gonna go right into that killjoy turret though. Yeah, it does look like they're gonna pull a fast one today, and go just gonna make contact here. Finds one, is looking for the second with their uh, specter. Finds one, and then gets traded. Trace is there to a. clean things up though, and support her teammate, which puts things at a four v two in Maryland's favor. And both of the pace players are heaven, and UMD is very aware of those positionings, and they're gonna. Uh, pressure up into heaven, uh, probably just to find those kind of picks to close out the round, and it looks like Trace will certainly do just that. Wow, double, double, triple kill coming out from Trace. Yeah, this is uh, off to a fantastic start. And you could see Maryland; they were considering throwing in that uh, that Omen flash. Um, yeah, right there, you could see. But they just opted for you know we've got the guns. There's no reason to spend this two hundred dollars. What are they gonna do? Push their way out? I mean, we've got specters; they've got pistols. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. That was really a subtle move, but smart from UMD, and they're able to boost their economy even Focus more. Um, they are going against a, a bit of a heavier buy from pay side, as it does look like they're ready to storm down B site. Yeah, just just right through garage. Looks like they are going to send that that raise player again. 
Um, but I don't think that they're going to be ready for Laura. Look at look at all the space that they're that they're making it. Able to catch the arm and get get the pick. That's a huge pick down now, and they're not, there's no way that they'll that pace is going to be able to get that uh, get the refrag. And so that's a that's just a free rifle uh, for UMD. Oh, Toxic might make contact here off of her right click and just gets unlucky with the TP. And the Vandals are coming in huge for pace, finding two UMD players, and UMD is numbers down in a retake situation. Yeah, the timing was just just not there, but. Uh, I mean, even even one kill is fine. They uh, UMD is just playing this down weapons. Uh, we're seeing a, a couple of sprays from the from this open player just backing up onto that uh, onto that catwalk. But uh, UMD now using their using their utility, trying to clear it out. But these vandals are just so tough. It's just so tough, especially with the range that uh, that pace has. Yeah, that was an unlucky matchup economy wise. I think UMD can. That's not something that UMD can't bounce back from. I think with better guns in hand, that round that round is very winnable for UMD. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, right off the right off the bat, we saw basically two UMD players go down because of those guns. We saw, um, uh, I believe, was it uh, Laura with that classic, just yeah. not able to find, uh, not able to find Omen just because of, just because you just don't really have the fire rate to the damage with that pistol, and and then I believe uh, also we lo uh, we lost. I think it was Ray's trying to get that uh, the refrag, and they get picked off by the gecko. Yeah, and UMD is aware because of the KO utility of Pace's positioning towards A site, but it doesn't look like they're too eager to rotate because it is quite quiet still from this Pace attack. Yeah, you can see pa uh, Pace is taking it super slow. They throw a smoke mid, just trying to bait out some rotations from UMD, just trying to uh, build up the intrigue. Um, and you can see it's, it's kind of working as KO is repositioning uh, themselves at least up to heaven, but he, uh, he might be going, yeah, he, he just goes up to heaven. We see the execute coming out now from Pace as they're, as they're going on, and there's only one person on site, and they're just going to go straight for, the, straight for the plant thanks to that gecko. Yeah, and Laura finds a good trade, which levels things out. Savani's peeking out into heaven, but the Roomba sells her out, but Gojo is pushing up to try and find some entrying picks, and she does. She finds the chamber swing try to try to find the second. Yeah, great time, great timing from her. Unfortunately, she's going to get picked out. She's not ready for uh, how much presence Pace has on that catwalk. It's normally something that's controlled by controlled by the defenders, but of course, Omen allows you to to get that. That's, I mean, that's why you play. Oh, and Pace was just caught at an unlucky angle there, and that is another round for Pace, and we're at two two. <laughs> Dark was Dark was playing a little a little risky. I was worried for a second they might go down to their own their own grenade. But uh, yeah, Pace is looking is looking great now. Uh, there's two pistol rounds didn't go their way, but uh, it looks like they're they're very comfortable on these on these rifles. They're uh, they're using that the movement that they have. That's really the advantage that they have over that UMD comp. Uh, they're not really able to slow down anything, but but they have the movement to get out of dodge if they need to. And we can see that that paid in spades for Dark that round. Yeah, and this is not a good economy situation for UMD, but regardless, Laura is just able to use her aim to find an early pick. That is a great kill, but she's not able to grab that Vandal because it was quite far away, but great great way to start things off. But yeah, the economy is not looking good for UMD, and um, they're going to have to find a way to make something out of nothing here. Yeah, I mean, uh, Laura's just doing a, a fantastic job this round. Uh, not only were they able to get that beautiful pick uh, in Garage, but additionally... Uh, we saw uh, uh, we saw them basically single-handedly stop any kind of aggression coming up from that garage, able to throw that nade and shoot the flash, the gecko flash. Uh, so, if uh, if Pace was hoping to to get aggressive there, uh, they they weren't able to. But a, a great rotation for them, able to find two on the flank as they're pushing their way onto uh, a now. Yeah, and just Trace is here on site, but not for long, as the Vandal once again is just a little too powerful to be able to find those kills. But Laura's pushing up with her Sheriff again, cannot find any success there. And it's all up to Toxic, who is able to pull off one kill with her Sheriff, which is gonna hurt the economy a little bit on the pace side. But yeah, another round goes in Pace's favor. Yeah, four, uh, four with the Sheriff against, the, against Vandals is a little bit too much to ask for, but uh, we are going to see we are going to see the full buys coming out from both teams now. If UMD wants to get back into this game, this is this is the round to do it. If they're able to win this, they'll be able to equalize and they'll be in a great position. 
Yeah, and based on what we see, I think we have a really good game on our hands. Look at the scoreboard. It's very even amongst both teams here. So we are definitely in for a treat with this series already, you can tell. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it looks like Pace yet again opting for that, that A side hit. Uh, they're not even putting somebody on mid or or B, they're just going fi a full five man onto, uh, onto A, and they're already going to be able to get that control towards, uh, towards heaven, but uh, unfortunately Dark missing their nade a little bit, gonna slow them down. Yeah, it, it happens, and the entries, regardless, is still there for Case, and it's just Savani who's left on site, gets a molly kill though, so she trades herself. Yeah, great job, able to bait out the, the Gecko ultimate as well, so great value coming out from the, uh, them, but Laura is going to fall, gets a lot of damage for, uh, for it, but uh, now UMD down 4-3. to three. Yeah, and I think like you said, with the damage UMD's done, this is very doable, especially when you have Gojo's nade on your side, just able to finish off players like that. And Trace has the information with her Sky Dog about a lot of the Pace players positioning, and the KJ ultimate is invested, which is going to push Pace to be aggressive in some form. Yeah, Pace is now forced to run out of the way. Not, I don't think they're going to have that corner for safety. Uh, I, I, oh, I'm wrong, as they're, they're going to be safe on point, but they're just going to get traded out. Uh, just no health for the team, and uh, Toxic going to do a great job just cleaning up uh, what's left. Yeah, huge round for UMD. That was an expensive round for them, so it's really important that it worked out the way it did, because now they still have some of those guns in hand. Um, they did use a bit of their... Um, ultimates but it paid off giving them the round yeah and and i mean they're not even really down any ultimates we see uh we see both teams two ultimates uh and uh two uh, both teams have two ultimates two uh two ultimates up two ultimates down and one ultimate coming up anytime now so uh for the ultimates that they use uh they're really not down at all pace looking towards b site yet again um, they like to push up just to make some presence in Garage, but they, they've been getting picked off um, as they peek that, which I think has stopped them from actually executing B so far. Yeah, you, you can see, uh, I mean, they've been playing uh, They've been playing much more slowly than they were those first couple rounds, uh, but uh, I feel like especially for, for this B side, they're just so scared. And we're going to see that huge Omen Flash, going to get two or three, at least, and we see Laura with the shotgun. This could be a huge if if they're not ready for it, but not quite going to be able to find anybody. As UMD is already going to be able to clean up most of the team. I love that game plan for UMD, just baiting the pace players onto site and then placing their defenders in a position that is meant to work off of the um, your own utility is just huge, and I think that's what really won UMD this round, as it looks like now. I mean, let's not talk too soon. I mean. These, these players, you know, there's a Vandal in the hands of Jark. We've seen, uh, I mean, we've seen clutches like this before. UMD needs to be very careful and make sure that they actually find this raise. <gasps> As, in fact, Chaos is just going to walk right past him. and That's going to be one kill for Jark. Are they going to be ready for the KJ behind them? I don't think so. They need to turn around, but KJ is not quite going to swing. Oh, I, oh, Go, Gojo, not quite sure whether or not they want to swing. And I'm not sure they, they want to either. Jark able to find a second and... This is getting. This is actually getting quite close, but Trace going to be able to pick up uh, the player. Yes, thank goodness for my <laughs> sake, we won that round. Just so I don't have a reputation for cur uh, cursing anything on here. <laughs> But that was a great round, and it did force Pace to use that raise ultimate, and it didn't get any kills. So that's also a big deal out of yeah, that round. That's absolutely something that, uh, like, it, I struggle with. It's it very easy. Uh, to lose yourself in the round, if you get one or two picks normally, uh, one or two kills by yourself is enough to put your team in a huge advantage. And so that's when you want to use the ults to secure the round. And when you're in that clutch situation, you just got to wait a second, I think, and, and really analyze what the position is before you do it. Yeah, so Pace looking fast towards A. The KO knife did alert UMD of that push to begin with. It looks like Pace is coming up fast and Trace is on the ropes, has to back up because she got pretty aggressively pushed there um, with a lot of utility coming from Pace. Yeah, unfortunately a little timing decides to dip down just at the wrong moment and she's not able to uh, put her way back up. But uh, that's going to give full control of Heaven to, uh, to Pace and it's just Gojo on site now. Are they going to be able to take out anybody? They are going to be able to take out one and there's no, there's no refrag, at least not on this side of the map for that pick, so Gojo still uh, still has control of the site. 
Yeah, it doesn't look like any of the fights have moved off of this A site the whole time. Pace just tried to enter A and they stuck with it and that's where they all ultimately met their demise because UMD was able to quickly rotate and help out their teammates. Yeah, absolutely. UMD has been doing a great job of even if they're forced to give up the heaven control, that player left on the site. Uh, and, and I think they were actually two on site playing together but um, uh, uh, that passed around. But they're just doing a great job of training themselves out before they go and making the retake that much easier. Yeah, I think you're right. And it just speaks to the cohesion and the game plan that this UMD team really has going into you each and every play. round. Let's play. Uh, UMD needs to be really careful now. That chamber ultimate can just take you out before before you can even blink. Looks like we're, it looks like we're seeing the first mid-round of the game so far. So, uh, and, and how, I think this is the, the first round that UMD really is not, uh, UMD doesn't really have that much presence. So, uh, Pace could kind of catch UMD off guard. UMD doing a great job of just uh, of just backing up and uh, looking like they're gonna play together, which has been which has been paying, been paying off in space for them. And a great off angle from Trace, able to find that uh, find that Reyna, uh, the lurker, and give UMD the advantage for this round. Yeah, but this slow uh, push mid through this A side rope is still a very real possibility for Pace. I don't think UMD has the read that that's where two of the Pace players are stacked up right now. And especially for Trace, she has to realize this quickly unless Pace decides to rotate and regroup towards B site. Yeah, it looks like they are opting for uh, the B Heaven hit. And it's, it's got to be so nerve wracking for them. UMD is doing a great job of just hiding and, and making, uh, making Pace make all the plays. and. Uh, unfortunately for UMD, they are going to be able to find Laura, but they still have no idea where the rest of these UMD players are. Yeah, and that chamber op just makes things so much harder, especially when it's placed Heaven. Heaven is not an option right now for UMD to take space in to help them retake at all. They're forced to all funnel in from CT, where there's just a util dump from Pace right now. Yeah, fortunately, they, uh, fortunately for UMD, they do have a pretty good read on where this op is, and they're not actually pushing into it as the dog comes down. But uh, the op is going to be able to hide uh, hide from the uh, uh, from the um, the dog. Unfortunately for him, he is going to get taken out by that uh, by the omen. But uh, I mean, yeah, look at that play. He's able to hide from the dog, and he get he's able to get one for it, and he's still got full control of this heaven side. Yeah, and it would be a quite a big ask here for Toxic to pull this round off as time is ticking down. And we are still pretty neck and neck here. Yeah, five to four. This is probably the closest uh, Valerie match I've seen, uh, uh, seen here casting. So uh, really excited if you uh, if you have any snacks, now might be the time to, to whip them out. We, we could be here for the long haul. Yeah, in the studio we have orange slices today. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. So. We have those to fuel us up for this matchup we have today in the studio. Everyone should be excited for what we're about to see. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, looks like we are going to see uh, just that traditional garage stack from Pace, uh, sending that, uh, I believe it's the Rays, uh, just to control middle. But after they, you can see that they've kind of picked up on the fact that uh, the Sky uses, the, uses their flashbang to check for mid, and that kind of tells the sky whether or not they're able to get that mid control so uh you can see the pace uh, the rays from pace uh gets blinded by the flash on purpose uh to tell uh, to tell umd like hey i'm here you guys cannot push this area and umd is playing very passive on mid forced to use another flashbang normally they just have a player there watching it so yeah and it's important to know laura has disconnected on the UMD side, so I think there is going to be a tech pause, and that means UMD is playing a player down for the remainder of this round, but you can't stop the round as it started, so UMD is going to have to find a way to make this work somehow. Yeah, um, we do see uh, we do see that uh, um, we, we see Pace pushing on to that uh, B site, which is normally their weaker side anyway. Unfortunately, Gojo not going to be able to take that uh, take that omen. Uh, that flashbang was just very well placed and. Uh, not going to be uh, going to be able to find it, but Savani is able to uh, uh, even out the round if it, if it wasn't for that disconnect. Now uh, pays up two to four. It's going to be a very very tough round for UMD to uh, crawl their way back from. Yeah, and the spike is planted, and that certainly puts a time constraint on things. And keep in mind, we are at now a one v four retake. All up to Trace here. She does have a Vandal in hand, but now especially with her positioning revealed, this might be a little bit hard. Yeah. 
Great shot from that uh, from that chamber, and we're gonna see. Fortunately, we are gonna see the reconnect, but it's too little, too late. As uh, Laura just forced to to play for her weapon, and she's gonna get taken out by the Reyna. So yeah, just unlucky for UMD to have Laura disconnect mid brown there, and then just uh, come back a little too late. Um, hopefully, that doesn't happen again. Yeah. So we can't really read too much into that round, I guess, as UMD was a player down. But regardless, it was still pretty close. Yeah, especially because UMD had that. Uh, they could have had that showstopper in their pocket. That is a pivotal. Um, that is a pivotal tool coming from UMD to uh, push their way back onto site. So not having that down. It, it, I know that the round ended 4-0, to zero, but I, uh, if Laura hadn't disconnected, we could have seen a totally different round. Yeah, and regardless, it's 5-5, five, five, and UMD has two ultimates to work off of, so I think this is a good place to stop for a timeout regardless, just to kind of think about how you want to utilize those timeouts going forward and hopefully end the half um, up a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's really important uh, to have the timeout now, as you're saying, because... Um, uh, like a lot of the rounds are dictated with momentum coming in, but especially with the disconnect and how close this game is, neither team really has any momentum going in, in, into these last two rounds. If you have like some secret strat or like the coach is, be, is able to pick up on some kind of uh, like some kind of tell that the enemy team is using over and over, now is a great time to to let the team know, and hopefully they're able to take these next two rounds. Yeah, and this is also important because like you said to begin the match with, Pace has a pretty attack-sided composition, um, and UMD, I think, with that KJ pick and Omen are going to be able to, um, you know, just use those as their switch to attack better than um, they might have been able to here. Yeah, I mean, uh, when you're on attack, absolutely, you know, the ability to step on the gas and just, you know, force your way onto a site is... Fantastic, but when you're on defense, especially if, uh, especially if UMD is able to bait out some of that util from pace, we could see them having a very difficult time uh, doing any kind of retakes and doing any kind of holding on site. So uh, we can see. Speaking of waiting, I mean, pace is doing a good job, just kind of uh, making uh, making UMD squirm a little bit. We're gonna see a quick uh, execute now, probably with all of these ultimates coming out. Uh, that uh, Gecko is able to fully clear out the site. Pace is just uh, forcing their way right onto it. We're gonna see the plant coming down from that uh, from that buddy uh, coming out from Gecko. A great grenade coming out though. That's gonna do a lot of damage to that Reyna. Unfortunately, uh, a, a good pick out from uh, from that chamber is going to find Laura uh, afterwards. Yeah, that was a great read from that chamber. Just uh, able to have the, the sense uh, to, through the smoke to just shoot and. Uh, they find another one and a third actually with Toxic and Savani both falling and that leaves things to a 2v5 take uh, retake and UMD do certainly doesn't have the best guns in hand in order to pull this off but I think they're just looking to play exits and just find one pace player at least. And here comes one pace player absolutely just walks right into Trace as that's going to be a guard now for UMD. They could be playing uh, to take out a few more and maybe even leave with their lives. Could be huge. Are they going to be able to get out with the with their guns? Uh, Trace is. So that's a, that, that's a huge play from those two players realizing that they can't win around instead of instead of just forcing their way out to site because I don't know. We've got no guns. We got nothing to lose. They're able to bring that game back to a, a back to a one v one and go into this next round with the extra rifle. Yeah, it's those little things that this team just does so well. You know, not giving anything up. You know, try, like trying, even though if the round seems like, okay, we've certainly lost this round, just making as much damage as you can to the other side has been all the difference here. Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, if you, I, I don't know if you if you picked up on this, um, I don't think that UMD had the money for one more rifle. So the fact that they were able to do that, huge aggression coming out. Sorry, I shouldn't, I should not have uh, blinked for even a second. Is Dark has already forced his way on, their way onto site now with that judge and that's going to be a plant coming out from Pace. That's, this is a fast plant. This is the most aggressive push we've seen from Pace so far. And it's worked out really well for them. But this is the last round they're going to be able to do something like this on. But Laura pulls out the ultimate. Cannot quite find anybody with it yet. Yeah, uh, Savani forced now into a 1v3. And that's going to be the end of her as we end this half. 5-7 for Pace. And it's actually really interesting. That kind of aggression that we saw where... Basically, as soon as the as soon as the uh, walls go down, um, Pace just 
jumped on the utility, sent that raise forward onto site, and just got like site control immediately. That was the aggression that I've been expecting this entire round. I'm sure UMD has been kind of bracing themselves for that as well. So honestly, I would say a great job from Pace, uh, playing with the expectations that UMD had for them. And uh, we can see that as, as soon as they, they do pull the trigger, because they've been doing that conditioning all round, uh, they're able to take the round. Yeah, like you said, I'm surprised we didn't see more of that from Pace to begin with. But now Pace on this defense really only has the Chamber and Omen utility to slow down any sort of UMD aggression. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out as we head into the first round of the second half. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're, we're seeing a lot of uh, mid pressure coming out from UMD. Laura's going to go down, down as well as as well as Toxic, but they're able to trade out Dark for it. So uh, as well as that Gecko, very, very low on HP. So you can see uh, that's a little unfortunate. Both teams just kind of whiffing, but uh, that that uh, Chamber having the Ghost able to give them the advantage in that fight. Yeah, it looks like we're going to take a quick replay here. Oh no, <laughs> did we have to replay that? Of all okay. the plays, oh. It's not up to us, it's not up to us. <laughs> but um, I think that's nothing UMD can't bounce back from. I know losing the pistol round is always a bit of a rough start, but I think they're in a position, they just need to find their groove. I think they need to get momentum back on their side and this game can be theirs. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think that they uh, that they played very aggressively on in, in that. Um, I'm interested to see, to see what happens if they just use that UTEL and just kind of wait uh, to feel out Pace's ag aggression, although Pace has been doing a great job of uh, uh, just like putting a damper on there, on, on the aggression that you might expect from that team. So uh, yeah, I, honestly, I'd feel a little bit lost if I was UMD in terms of what to do. Yeah, and huge pick from Laura, making noise mid. It does look like Dark on the pace side has eyes on mid now, but Laura's HP is quite low, but she can get healed up um, by the sky. Yeah, Gojo get, able to get way further onto site than I would have expected, as well as Sivani, but they're going to get uh, taken up by that uh, by the uh, rays of pace. And they're just opting to, to go back to A. They realize, hey, all of Pace is, has rotated from the pressure that we caused. And we can get Cypher free now. So uh, we can see a, a complete fit of flipping momentum for this round as they're able to get down the plant. Yeah, great awareness from UMD. And damage has certainly been done on the Pace side and now on the UMD side as well as Toxic does get picked off Heaven. But the Omen is very low for Pace. This is completely doable for UMD. Yeah, unfortunately, Loria is going to get uh, gunned down by two of uh, two of the Pace players. And Trace just not able to keep up with the Stinger with her classic. So Pace is going to be able to take the round. Kind of expected. They were on the save round with their classics. And, and Pace would have had all the weaponry, but still a very close round for them. So it, uh, if we if we see the same uh, the same type of play coming out with those rifles, uh, we could totally see UMD make this comeback. It's not bad at all, 5-9. Yeah, and it looks like we are about to see those rifles just now uh, as UMD is able to actually uh, buy up for the most part for the first time. So it'll be uh, quite interesting to see how they're able to work off of having those slightly upgraded guns in hand. Yeah, so uh, what we're seeing from UMD, and this is this is why you want to have that Killjoy even on attack, is the Killjoy is going to be able to completely shut down any kind of aggression from Pace on uh, on that A site if they want to try to get into a weird uh, like a weird spot in UMD spawn. That Killjoy with her with her choice is able to completely shut that uh, able to completely shut down any kind of flankers and just forces all of Pace to be grouped up in sight as UMD tries to pinch them from the uh, from the vents. Yeah, and things are going quite slow to start this round off, but I do think we're about to see a fight um, mid, potentially, as it does look like a lot of the UMD players, three of them to be exact, are pushed up mid and planning to um, figure out which site they want to hit based off their first contact, I think. Yeah, a lot of aggression coming out from that uh, from that omen out of pace. I, I, I don't know what kind of call they got, but Savani's able to take advantage of that. He's able to get he's able to get one and give UMD the advantage in this fight or in this round as UMD finds themselves up three to uh, three to two, though that uh, sky is very very low. Yeah, Trace is very low, and she does have bomb in hand and just gets caught. On an unfortunate timing, but we're still at a 2v2, and the Reyna on the pay side is also quite low. But I think UMD still has their positioning um, in their favor, as I don't think um, 
Pace has the read that they're both heaven right now. Yeah, so we see the the Reyna coming up, and she's gonna get cut down. We know where this uh, we know where this gecko is. He's got the stinger, but this is a great angle for him to have. But Savani's not having it at all. Able to get the pick and win the clutch round. That was a very close round. Fortunately, UMD able to able to grab it. Yeah, great round, and that's UMD's first round actually on attack that went in their favor. And just take another look at the scoreboard. Things are so even, pretty much on both sides, and that the score is reflecting that and i see an operator um on the pace side just to point that out before we head into this round oh no I, if you're umd are, are you prepared for this i i know i wouldn't be expecting an operator so uh fortunately for them they uh they're not going to be pushing into that and savani great shot onto that omen not having any kind of aggression as they're able to get the pick and that's that was already pace's weak site so they should be able to get control of the site very very easily as laura is going to be able to even plant out in the open so uh, great stuff from UMD. Yeah, UMD able to plant with relatively um, at relative ease still, and they do have done quite a bit of damage on the pace side as they're at a five b three. And the ultimate was used for pace. I don't think they found much value off of it, which is a big deal taking that ultimate out of the game. And Gojo will make contact um, off of this heaven, um, like mid heaven area. Yeah, a beautiful flank from Dark, able to get the omen, but there's just too many players from UMD, and there's not enough time left. So I, I would be very surprised if they're able to get if they're able to get this round. Uh, but they're doing a great job, and uh, uh, Gojo isn't on site, so are they gonna be able to cover it? There comes the, there comes the Molly out and play time, but of course, uh, Gecko has that has that ability, and they're able to find they're able to find the round. That that's what Gecko is used for. You don't see Gecko very often, but if you do, it's in order to to get those diffuses in a one v one, as if it's just a two, as if it's a two v one. Yeah, and that round was a nail biter. I think you put any agent there other than Gecko, and that round goes to UMD. It's very unlucky that they were just that wingman was able to hold that diffuse while uh, Laura had to fight that one v one still at the same time. It's you know just anybody other than Gecko would have been <laughs> ideal there. Yeah, absolutely. I'm curious what happened to the to the Molly. Does it not kill the wingman? I. I yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if the Molly landed or if it was kind of like Wingman uh, avoided it or what. Um, but yeah, regardless, just unlucky to be up against Gecko in that situation. Yeah. So uh, UMD, uh, this is the, probably the most aggressive round we've seen so far from them. Stacking up four, but we're going to see the one-way Omen smoke. It's not quite going to be able to find anybody, but uh, UMD's got to be counting their lucky stars. There was uh, very, very close to losing a player there uh, just, just from their toes. Yeah, and UMD looks like they want to actually push through this smoke. They have the utility to do it with two initiators and a duelist on their side, and Laura will pull out the raise ultimate. Cannot quite find anybody, but does quite a bit of damage. Is going to push to finish off that omen, and Savani follows right behind her. Yeah, UMD able to get control on this, looking like a mirror of uh, of last round. Uh, up, uh, up players now up now up two players just like last round, as well as uh, Spike. Hopefully, they're able to play. Uh, they're able, they're able to play this one before a little bit better this time, uh, but you know now there's nobody behind and all the players are on site, so it's gonna be very very hard for this gecko to find an opportunity to put wingman onto that spike. Yeah, and this would be a great round for UMD in terms of momentum as well. I think as we head into these uh, closing double digit rounds, it's momentum is everything, especially if the chance for overtime is there. You really just want to have all the momentum and money on your side. Yeah, Toxic able able to see the gun barrel just before just before they come out and uh, UMD, you know, there's been a little bit of a, a little bit of a rough half uh, thanks to uh, Pace being able to take the momentum from the end of uh, the first half, but you can see smiles on their faces. We could absolutely see the momentum switching back. They've not let this get to them. Yeah, and I think we're in a little bit of a tech pause here. I'm not sure what side it's for um, or what's going on, but hopefully that gets resolved as soon as possible. And yet again, another thing that is going to build up suspense um, before we close out the first game of the series. Yeah, this is this has been a nerve-wracking game. Looks like it looks like we're all good. Oh, okay. I think it's something coming out from the UMD side, but it looks like everything is everything is going to work out. Yeah, glad to hear that got resolved quickly. Um, I'm sure neither side wants to wait around for a yeah. long time um, before we get things rolling here. Yeah, we're probably going to be seeing the Chamber Ultimate coming out 
and uh, unfortunately for UMD, they're not, they're, they don't have too much presence mid, so the uh, that ultimate shouldn't be too much of a detriment to them. Um, he, if you're a, if you are champion, you have to be very careful to stay out of that KO ultimate because it will take away your ultimate. Fortunately, uh, Dirk. Uh, fortunately for Dirk, he's able to uh, sneak their way back all the way to screens, and she's going to be perfectly safe now. As those uh, as the little cabbages come out from Sky, as UMD gets full control, but Toxic just peeks out a little bit too far, and looks like they're going to get their arm clipped. Fortunately, Laura uh, get is able to get the refrag. frag. That's huge. Yeah, and four v four here, but the guns are certainly in UMD's favor. As we can see by Savani finding an entry pick um, onto this retake effort. Enemy remaining. Yeah, uh, Yundi is going to lose the man advantage, but they have the gun advantage. Now, somebody's on spike. Are they going to be able to find it? Great job, a great grenade coming out from that raise. Uh, able to force Reyna off the spike and just playing time because they, uh, they know that there's no time. Laura able to get the, the 2v1 clutch. Uh, great positioning from her. Yeah, great job from Laura, just playing her utility and her positioning very wisely in order to leave nothing up to chance that round. And UMD is slowly crawling back into making things more even. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, it looks like uh, UMD uh, get the, getting their momentum. They do have somebody in spawn. Hopefully that's not a... Uh that, that's nothing uh, technical, but they're moving now, so it's fine. As they're uh, as they're grouping up with the rest of their team on that B side, uh, they don't have to worry about the chamber ultimate anymore. So I think he's been playing mid with his operators. So UMD putting two people on that mid, uh, able to you know at least relatively safely get control of that part of the map. Yeah, and it does look like UMD has two mid, three B for now. Um, the KJ ultimate is invested for the UMD side, which is going to hopefully lend a little bit more space onto their attack because it is going to force the only defender on the B side, Omen, to back up to a quarter where, is, uh, where uh, Molly is as well. One yeah, but no, able, to find, able to find two while well flashed. Uh, that was a, a great defensive job from that Omen, and now KJ in that in that 1v3 situation. It's going to be very hard. Able to find one, able to find two. Is they, are they going to be able to play Ring Around the Rosie? It's down to a 1v1. They've got the pistol. They've got the molly as well if they need a, a second to reload. But it, uh, it looks like they're just going to be forced to use that uh, that classic. And do they know where they are? There's the gun. And I caught the reload, and that's going to be it. That is a... Oh, that's so unfortunate. That's so that's such a unlucky way to lose that clutch, but she was right there in it. She finds some two like two amazing picks there. Great reaction time, great crosshair placement. Everything technical was perfect. Just unlucky with the reload timing. Yeah, I was ready to write UMD off as, <laughs> in that 3v1, but beautiful shots and she and the KJ also you could see covered for basically every option that Pace had, except for the one they went for. They had the uh, they had the um, turret watching uh, her backside, the other pillar. They had the molly that's uh, waiting in case they go for any kind of aggression during the reload, but unfortunately just caught at the last second of her reload. And uh, Pace able to able to just barely keep, keep hold of that round. And UMD's working off of a pretty good buy here up against a not-so-strong buy from Pace. It does look like regardless, Pace is going to be aggressive, but Laura's not having any of that as she quickly finds the first kill to open up this round. And oh, the Bucky in the smoke is just such a problem creator for UMD. <laughs> oh, no. Fortunately, uh, UMD is going to be able to trade out uh, uh, trade out the, the Bucky after only getting one pick and heal up the, the Omen. Who, uh, who took the bro uh, uh, most of UMD's uh, damage and the showstopper coming in, but it's only going to be able to find one. And we see another 1v1, another ring around the rosy situation as uh, fortunately UMD now has the advantage yeah, as I Pace is going to be the one who needs to who needs to play with the diffuser. Yeah, Trace just has to play Spike smart here. I think she knows that as well. She's not peeking into the chamber, not really giving her anything uh, to work off of. She's definitely just listening for the audio cue and working off of that, and she's just oh. not quite able to close out that round. But it's honestly a little bit of a coin flip there when it comes down to a 1v1. Yeah, and uh, bo both players were playing that so well. Um, we saw the ta uh, uh, um, the um, sorry the chamber uh, tapping the spike over and over again, tapping it and then leaving the leaving the area, hoping to to bait out uh, the the like an overcommit from the sky, and 
uh, and it worked well. The sky was never able to get a good angle, but unfortunately, uh, uh, at least until that very end, they weren't able to bait out the sky either. So, really, really tense moment. Unfortunately for for UMD, they're gonna have they're gonna end up on getting the short end of that that stick as we see a timeout coming now from Pace. Yeah, I think the timeout oh, actually yeah. yeah it's from UMD and. These rounds just have been so close for UMD. Just it's enough to you know they're they're not winning these rounds by such a narrow margin that it can be hard um, in terms of your momentum to not come away with some of those really close rounds. Uh, so UMD is going to have to find a way either in this match or the next game to you know just channel you know that momentum and just get something going there uh, to put them ahead. Yeah, absolutely. I mean now and now is the time for a timeout. Uh, you need to you need to find something and you need to get momentum quick. Five rounds is or sorry, four rounds even just to bring it to overtime is not a big ask. So uh, we could absolutely see uh, something come out from UMD, but only time will tell. Yes, and it does look like UMD um, opting towards B site with a lurk on A potentially towards mid. Doesn't look like mid is being heavily contested at all by pace. It's pretty open, and Laura will take advantage of that and make her way uh, towards B heaven. It looks like where there's also really not a whole lot of pace players. Yeah, this has been a double-edged sword for pace uh, this entire round because they've lost the gecko uh, because of because of how much aggression. UMD has been able to get on that uh, on that uh, B Heaven side, but on the other hand, uh, that means that they're able to place more people on site and keep control longer. So uh, it's hard to say really whether or not giving up that much control has, has worked out for them. And unfortunately, Gojo just gonna get timed a little bit. Really unlucky. We saw she was watching for that fence, but she just looks at the wrong time, and that that's gonna be a, a huge advantage for Pace. Yeah, and it's a preview one now, but Trace can do this, and she is hitting some amazing shots here. Knows the positioning of the player of heaven, finds them. She knows the positioning of the last player. I'm not sure. I think her main priority is to revive her teammate, possibly. I'm not sure if she's going to We have to spike down, though. She has her ultimate as well. This could, this is the best uh, situation UMD has found themselves in, is the uh, spike is ticking down, uh, ticking down. And how do we keep on finding ourselves in these situations? Unfortunately, it is a Gekko again. Falls to the mosh pit, just, I, I bet it's by pixels. And unfortunately, that's going to be it for round one. Or for, for game one, in fact. Yeah, and like I said, just so close. UMD is losing these rounds by just such a narrow margin. And they fight throughout the whole round and then lose that the last second. So in between this next game, UMD just has to sit, think, how are we going to not let this affect our momentum? How are we going to walk into this next game with confidence in our abilities? And I think that'll carry them far if they're able to do that. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, props to Pace where it's due. They were, doing a, they were doing a great job. It happened multiple rounds. I think two or three, maybe, where uh, when they were doing the retakes on to B, um, they were leaving the Gecko in the back so that he's able to assist with the flashbangs for you know the entries and then if it ends up being you know like a close round like a 1v1 situation 2v1 situation uh it's always been that gecko he's able to use the wingman and give give uh pace the advantage in that ring around the rosy situation and unfortunately umd is not going to be able to find any of them yeah, well, we saw a very tight and action-packed first game so make sure you guys tune in for the second game of the series right after a quick commercial break yeah we'll see you then
welcome back and I am just very excited to see the second game. That game was such a nail biter. I know it didn't come down to overtime or anything, but some of those rounds were just, you know, so intense. Yeah, <laughs> if we just saw like a little bit of a better, a little bit of a better spray or like, uh, you know, timings like a second off maybe, less than that even, we could have seen so many of those rounds go, go the other way. Yes, so. and I believe we're playing Ascent as our next map. Again, I love Ascent. I think it's a really fun map to play. Mm -hmm. I think if we want to stick with the KJ pick, and uh, we've been using KO as initiator too, those are both really strong picks on this map. So hopefully UMD can, you know, cook up a good composition. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I think that, uh, at least from my experience, Ascent is kind of like a fan favorite of the maps. Uh, just very, very normal map. Yeah. All, all the maps kind of have their little gimmick. I mean, Ascent has the doors, but uh, that's just kind of become a staple of Valorant. We've seen, we see that in a couple of other maps now at this point. So, uh, Ascent is like really the map for if you just want a nice game that's about gunfights and uh, and like en entry strategies. Yeah, and I'm not sure which uh, side UMD is opting to start for on this Ascent map. I think they found a lot of success on attack um, in terms of like just their confidence and we saw most of our close rounds last game when UMD was on attack. So a part of me is kind of hoping they're starting on attack. I know Ascent tends to be a defensive sided map, but I really just want to see um, more confidence from the UMD side. I think they're very capable of uh, coming home with this round. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, if you want to talk about confidence, what I'm really interested to see is whether we're going to see a similar like high just high octane team uh, team composition coming out from pace um y like yes split is a very execute heavy map and so you know if pace just decided in scrims that this is what feels right for split that's one thing but if that's the the type of play that we're seeing that we're going to see from uh, from them for this entire series, now is the time for UMD to, to really figure out what is going on with that pace team and figure out how to beat it. I think you're exactly right. And what I also want to see from this game is maybe some more operators happening, uh, especially for the UMD side. I think Pace uh, played, especially since they had a chamber on their side, they played their operator very wisely, and it paid off for them usually when they had an operator in hand. So I want to see some, some of those long-range weapons for UMD come into play. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we we saw, uh, we we did see several operators coming out uh, coming out from pace, and it really felt like they were trying to force it onto that chamber. I think the chamber uh, from that pace team is just very very confident with that weapon. Um, I mean, we we saw even like like a operator half shields by on like the third round, and I think he ended up going down early in that round anyway. And they just kept on forcing it throughout the game. So uh, certainly from uh, from pace, we're going to see a lot of more, a lot more operators. Let's see if uh, UMD is going to uh, m match them. Yeah, and I'm just hoping um, this UMD team has settled into the space here in the studio and settled into their, you know, gameplay um, when they're all, you know, together here side by side. It's a very different feel than when you're just uh, playing in your own home uh, virtually with each other and. You know, I, I'm, I'm excited to see what they're able to bring into this next round. Um, I'm also I'm interested to know what Pace is thinking of in terms of composition. They did opt for a bit of a more unusual composition uh, going with the Reyna and the Chamber pick. I wonder if they have any surprises for us on Ascent. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, you know, we talked about it a little bit before. Split has a lot of tight corners and a lot of, like, high grounds that are really good for... You know, especially that raise, uh, you you could see Reyna, uh, a lot of success for her as well, uh, especially profiting off of the way that Split is designed. So um, I think Ascent uh, favors a lot more of like, like we, I, w I wouldn't be surprised to see like a Sova or, you know, especially like another KJ coming out from uh, from UMD. And it's a really good map to, to be able to stall and, and buy time, which kind of counters even. Uh, like the high aggression that we saw from Pace. Yeah, I would love to see a Sova um, as the initiator pick. I would also be interested to see if we um, have a lot of Odins and Ares um, 
Aries especially as like a half purchase is really powerful on this map considering the walls are so thin, everything is so wall bangable. Um, you know, it's interesting to see how UMD or Pace might take advantage of that, especially on the defensive side. Yeah, absolutely. I I think it was two weeks ago we were watching the Premier Team play on this map. Yep. And <laughs> we saw multiple picks uh, just as soon as the walls went down, we saw the Odin barreling through the uh, barreling through that that B wall and getting picks. I think even without the silver darts, uh, a couple rounds just just spraying and hoping to find somebody, and it found seven people on multiple rounds. Yeah, and another thing we saw from um, our premier team that we usually stream is um, the Omen pick for smokes, and that has also been a really solid choice on ascent using those one ways um on a site and we have word that we are attack on this map and i'm hey this is yeah this that's is what you're hoping for <laughs> yeah uh, i i i don't i don't disagree with you at all i think that if they're able to find some momentum on attack not only is that gonna of course you know a good a good attack half is a good half especially on a defensive side of the map but if you're able to uh dig into pace's confidence a little bit um, that's definitely going to that's definitely going to be a big hit. Yeah, I, that I think that's what this game is about. I think UMD has proved they can aim. They proved they can use their game sense. They proved they can work as a team. What they have to show now is, hey, you know, I have the confidence. I'm gonna push into this site. I'm gonna you know make all this space and just that's what I want to see from UMD. Yeah. So okay, we're finally we're finally coming into a set, and we're seeing a neon pick. <laughs> okay, I, I, they have to be they have to be messing with uh, messing with us now, uh, UMD. But uh, we are seeing uh, we are seeing both teams hovering. Um, uh, that that newest operator, I'm blanking on the name. ISO, yeah, newest ISO, agent. Yeah. Um, we have not seen a whole lot of ISO gameplay on the stream, so I'm kind of hoping one of the teams at least sticks with an ISO pick. I think that would be really fun. Um, but yeah, both teams just having a little bit of fun <laughs> <laughs> hovering different agents uh, before anyone locks in. Yeah, and you were talking about the omen pick. Both teams hovering that omen. Definitely, it definitely makes sense. You can get. Uh, it's a nasty one way on on a. Basically, you can have one person hold down that that a main by themselves. Um, uh, so, not surprising at all. I think there are also some one ways for for B side. They're not quite as strong, but um, yeah, the uh, the omen has a lot of uh, a lot of really good uh, tactics for for this map specifically. So, not surprised at all. And we're seeing the first lock in. We're seeing Gojo on that killjoy. Not surprised at all. Great pick on this map. Yeah, KJ is a great pick, and Toxic's gonna opt for the Reyna. Both sides actually opting for the Reyna. That is exciting. I'm glad she's creeping back into the meta, possibly a little bit. And I did also see um, the same chamber pick on Pace's side, so we are gonna see those long range weapons again be a big factor. Yeah, the uh, uh, the defensive backbone for what Pace had actually is going to remain very similar. They have. Uh, the, uh, they have that chamber, and they also are going to have that gecko as well, um, not opting for uh, some of the other initiators. So uh, definitely interested to see. I mean, the wingman was was doing great work, especially on that big color. But you really don't have uh, you don't have a great opportunity to play uh, some of those mind games on uh, as gecko. So definitely going to, going to be interesting to see what kind of shenanigans we have in store with that. Uh, uh, with uh, Gecko's little buddies. Yeah, and this is a very similar comp that Pace is coming in with. Uh, as they did for Split, I believe they just didn't have a KJ um, on Split. So I think you're right. I think they really just have a game plan, like a backbone, like you said, of how they want to use uh, the Chamber and the Gecko, and they play off of that, and they build their attacks off of that plan. Um, so yeah, UMD ready to head into attack here. Looks like they are looking towards mid and B. Yep. Uh, and it's, it's a good call from them. I think we're seeing three from uh, like towards that A side. Great shot from uh, from Chamber, able to teleport away before uh, he loses much more uh, much health in return. And uh, that's just going to be a, a, a quick early advantage for Pace. Yeah, and UMD. I want to see them bounce back from this, and you know at least just find one pick on this B side if they're going to rotate out um, before they do so. And it looks like there's a bit of a <laughs> uh, whiff going on in mid from both sides, and just unlucky uh, with the reload from Trace there. But 
that was a quite funny interaction. <laughs> yeah, bo both players looking like they were waiting for the other player. Yeah. To, uh, th they were both going for a fully committed to that strafe, hoping that the other player was going to take the second to uh, to just like recalculate their aim. And great job, great job from uh, Zavani, able to find one, but unfortunately forced to reload. And Pace has been doing a great job of refragging on the reloads this round. So uh, they, they should be able to... Uh, I was gonna say convert that into a round win, but a great shot from Gojo, able to find, able to find one uh, off of the uh, defuse, but able, to, uh, unfortunately, going to fall to Omen, and that's gonna be round one. Yeah, so not the start UMD would have ideally liked to have um, heading into the second game of this series, but they definitely made some damage on the other side. I think uh, they got at least two of the pace players bringing down the economy uh, just a little bit. But yeah, UMD is going to be forced to kind of uh, work with classics for the most part. Yeah, uh, we are going to see that Sheriff out of Laura. And to be fair, she was she was kind of nasty a couple yeah. of those rounds. So, uh, you know, keep, definitely keep an eye out for Laura. We could see... If she if she's on and she finds the right opponent, uh, she has the right opponent. We could see that uh, completely change the momentum of this round. Yeah, and just such aggression from Pace on the defensive side with a bulldog in hand. The bulldog was able to find two to start things off. Three actually, but eventually um, they get traded um, thanks to Toxic. Yeah, and she's actually going to pick up that uh, that bulldog herself. Unfortunately, she doesn't have any of her abilities to heal up, uh, so. She's, so she's not going to be the powerhouse that Reyna really can be when you have a weapons advantage. Um, but still, UMD 2v4, do not count them out yet. We could uh, we could absolutely see something. If if this Gecko isn't ready for this Reyna in this corner, um, th this this round could change quickly. But unfortunately, uh, just going just gonna to be able to find Toxic, and now it's a 4v1, the classic. This is an uphill battle if I've ever seen one. Yeah, and just great, great effort from Pace to clear that corner. I know a lot of times uh, that's a killer there when, whenever you don't clear that. Um, so unlucky for UMD, but yet again, not, not a crazy out of reach round for UMD, but still they're not able to come away with anything just yet. Yeah, so, so this, is, uh, this is the round that UMD really needs to win. This has been a game full, uh, fully based about, uh, uh, this is a game fully based about momentum. We didn't see anything uh, much on the momentum side really until, that, until the very end. Uh, on split, so if UMD wants to get some momentum this game, this is really the time to start it. Yeah, I think you're exactly right, and they do have a decent buy in hand, as you can see Laura um, with her Vandal to work off of. Um, looks like they're looking towards this A site where there is only two pace defenders. Doesn't look like mid is being too heavily contested yet. Gotta be ready for this Bucky again. He's gonna sneak his way into the smoke, and he's gonna, he's gonna be able to find one as well. Great, a uh, uh, great positioning from Omen. He's gonna be forced out with that, uh, with that Sova Dart, and Toxic's gonna be able to trade one back. But still, I, this is not the start to the round that UMD needed. Yeah, it looks like Trace is gonna, or Toxic rather, was gonna push up. Um, into tree, but she gets picked off there once again by this Reyna. But Gojo has great positioning in order to find that trade. Yeah, she's just gonna get her turret, and now uh, she's gonna she's going to step up and take it, take control of tree. She's got to be very careful about this about this uh, Bucky, and we can see actually um, that uh, that Chamber who was is setting up heaven could have been a huge detriment with that outlaw forced down to five HP now. So uh, if KJ is able to cross through here. Uh, the chamber is going to have a very hard time making much of an impact in this round, I think. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. With just such little HP and with these walls being so thin, this chamber is going to really have to play um, safely if they want to escape with their lives. And wow, they're just able to find a great shot um, and keep pace at a numbers up. Yeah, unfortunately, it's a very hard angle to, to check, especially with that outlaw. As Omen playing on top of the generator, able to find the, the chamber and Sova watching their back. Great job uh, from UMD, just playing just playing together. We were talking about this in the pre-show, their trust in these, especially 2v2 situations it seems. Uh, just doing a great job of, of shutting down every angle that Pace can come from. And able to clean up the round. Yeah, and like we are talking about, I do see an operator come in yeah. for Pace. I'm sure that's going to be played mid, but UMD has um, decent weapons in hand to oppose. And we're two to one, so things are not out of reach for Maryland by any means. They just have to really find their rhythm here on attack. Yeah, fool, so fool me once, shame on me. Um, but fool me twice. If UMD falls for this, uh, for this, 
uh, Operator Light Shield's trick, and in fact, that Ray, uh, Toxic is going to fall for it. It's just it, it's just so deadly. You you got to be so so careful whenever that chamber has access to that operator in hand. Yeah, now the information's out about that Operator, so it doesn't look like UMD will be pushing mid much, but Operator finds a second UMD player in this round, putting UMD at a number just down disadvantage as they try to make some space mid. Yeah, great job, great job from Pace getting, uh, getting that uh, kill and then immediately restructuring their entire defense in order to get that Operator to uh, somewhere unexpected. They're able to get a second pick for it. Yeah, it does look like UMD just kind of waiting for... Um, Pace to peek out into mid. It looks like the timing's just a little bit off, so there's no contact made yet in mid. But are we gonna get a second a second pick? Both players hi hiding, and unfortunately, uh, Gojo is going to get the short end of the stick and is going to fall. Um, and now it's just and now it's a two v four. Both players trapped in that mid area. Uh, that sorry, that a main area. And what do you what do you do if you're Maryland? Such low HP. Looks like they're gonna go. Uh, rotate themselves back towards that mid side, but it's still so tough. They still have that op. Thirteen seconds now. They're just gonna they're just gonna save their weapons and go into the next Ten round. Yeah, left. I think it's just smart to save here. Um, I'm lucky that they didn't come away with that round. I think a lot of that came from um the mid the mid fights that were going on. But UMD holding on to two of their guns into the next round, but Pace still has that operator in hand. Yeah, and, and it's only it's only getting deadlier from here. He's going to be able to get the, the full shields now. Um, so, you know, you can really put him anywhere. You can we might see something uh, we might see some high aggression even coming from from the B side, from the A side. We see we see um operators peeking there with the uh, uh just like the just mains walking up, uh, especially with that chamber TP able to get a lot of aggression and uh, instead, he's just going to opt for that for that mid control. But I mean, you can fully shut down a push with with the operator mid, so not a bad choice. Yeah, and we do see the one way we were mentioning come into play for Pace, which is gonna deter uh, Maryland from pushing there, unless Trace gets any sort of read off of her utility to work off of. She she's not uh, going to be able to find the the, the read, but even still. Uh, the shock dart just, or the uh, sorry, the recon dart still forces Omen all the way off and back to the generator. So, uh, still not you not wasted run. utility. And we're speaking of not use, wasted utility. We're seeing the the killjoy ultimate come out now. Uh, looks like it's gonna essentially force Pace off of sight into that little into that little corner in the back now, and uh, the K will follow, follows up with that killjoy ultimate in order to to silence all of uh, all of Pace and uh, they're be they're gonna be able to find. Uh, Find the players, but it's just red, red, blue, red, blue. As UMD down only one, and we see that operator come into play yet again. That was just a fast round, and a lot happened there all at once. Um, onto A site. I think as soon as that KJ ultimate, um, you know, finally detonated, everything just kind of the round exploded, and everybody just kind of ran into each other all at once there, with the positioning being so limited, and UMD just the fights didn't go them their way that round. Yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I wouldn't even say it was the fight's not going their way. They just ended up kind of on a kind of on the back foot in the beginning and forced to instead of getting instead of getting picks, they were forced to just play for the for for the refrags. And unfortunately, uh, if you're only getting refrags and not picks, that means that you're going to you're going to be on the back foot for the round. And speaking of back foot, that's going to be a pick from uh, from Pace. That operator just doing so much damage. You have no idea where it is and. Really, the only way to find it is by is by finding it. But I mean, that's exactly what Savani's gonna do. Yeah, that operator can just be so frustrating, and now the operator being out of the round, huge deal for UMD. Hopefully, they're able to kind of find that window um, in order to pull something off here. As it looks like they're peeking into mid aggressively. I'm not sure if they're aware of this Raiders positioning here. They have to be eventually, but it looks like Savani has a great angle uh, with her sheriff there. Yeah, there was there was probably a timing there while Savani was was putting that smoke back up. But unfortunately for Lorena, it's kind of impossible to time that, and she's just not going to be able to. And we're going to be seeing a, a huge aggression coming up from that Omen. And whiffing that first shot, he's just going to get swung up by three players, and now... UMD finally, finally doing a uh, doing a great job getting uh, getting uh, the advantage in a round now up four to two as they're doing a great job just getting their way onto site just fully get the uh, the spike down and this is and this is the best round that we've seen from UMD this half uh, this game so far by far. 
yeah and Savani's had an amazing round I think she's up to her third kill this round um and you know I think that's been all the difference just her winning her individual fights has put UMD at a huge advantage here yeah here comes here comes the gecko flash it's going to be able to find that omen of the generator but uh unfortunately uh, you, Pace not able to, to capitalize off of it, just waiting just a second too long probably as the Omen able to regain their vision and they're going to be able to get the, get the round. Yeah, an amazing ace from Savani that actually. Was it was an ace. Wow. Yeah. I want to I want to point that out because she did all, you know, she put in all the effort that round and <laughs> it really paid off. Just, yeah, great round from her. Hopefully that'll be some you know, incentive to flip the momentum like I keep saying and uh, now that you have just you know, that an ace just always is a great boost for your team. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah, Unity is in a great position now. A lot of aggression coming out from them. They, they get the Omen Flash, forcing Reyna off of that, uh, off of that initial position. She's going to be able to find one, but it is the, is the KO, so it's totally possible that they're, they're able to stabilize for this round. They find Dark. They're going to lose one on site, but they're able to get the, the KO back up and, and even out this round. This Gojo finds a second, and that's going to be control for them on the site. Yeah, and walling off, lowering the wall to the operator, huge deal for UMD. It's going to force the um, chamber on the pay side to rotate and potentially hit CT with operator in hand, which is not ideal in terms of um, distance positioning. Yeah, that, that's just such a tough angle to take with the operator. I, I mean, the gecko is going to be able to set him up on the position, but Omen's free to... Uh, absolutely free to, to peek whenever he wants, whenever, uh, whenever they want, basically, because... Again, there's just so many angles that you have to watch, especially when that smoke is covering your CT. I mean, you have to be looking down main. You have to be checking all the corners that there are. There's the little, uh, there's the little cubby just below the stairs as well. And unfortunately, you know, Chambers just not able to watch all of them. Yeah, and Savani just is on a roll right now. I believe um, she got a 2K last round. So she's just, uh, you know, reeling it in with the picks. As you can see, she has 10 kills already on Omen, which is always a huge deal for your team. Yeah, so we're seeing a oh, beautiful shot from Dark, able to able to fi get Laura. And of course, uh, because we see the Reyna, she's able to uh, get, a get out safely. Unfortunately, Toxic not going to be able to boast the same kind of escape because... Uh, that uh, Gecko Ultimate just able to, you know, shut it down the worst possible spot out of the smoke in the middle of nowhere and gets gunned down from heaven. Yeah, and UMD just now has to reconsider where they want to push. It looks like they're going to try to uh, look mid, see if that is a possibility at all as um, Dark is pushing out. Um, of a side, they might catch Savani here, um, but Savani is, is where the positioning is able to fight back. Just for the second, I mean, it, you know, the first shot, the first shot was cheeky. The second shot was uh, almost, you know, I don't want to say foolish, but I mean, if you miss that headshot, you're basically guaranteed to go down there. Unfortunately, UMD not going to be checking all of their corners as uh, Chamber finds just the, just the right one. And he's gonna be able to put UMD in a great spot for this round. Uh, not UMD pace uh, in a great spot for this round as they're able to pick it up. Yeah, great patience from the chamber there. Obviously, just yeah, you know, great trigger discipline, not immediately shooting. And yeah, that that basically won them the round, I believe. Finding yeah, those two yeah, players there. Yeah, I completely there. agree. Um, UMD, yeah, UMD was looking great going into that going into that round, especially after the Reyna. Uh, PK was just a little bit too far. They had uh, they had all of the. Uh, all of the power to, you know, if they had seen that chamber, they fully would have had B control. They they would have been uh, equal in manpower. You know, it, it it really could have been their their round, but unfortunately, just just missing one corner. And I mean, there's just so many. You know, sometimes it happens. Yeah, and we are gonna see a timeout um, from the UFD side. I think this is a wise place to take a timeout and. It's important to note that this game is really not out of reach for UMD. It is 5-3, and that is honestly a small margin in Valorant. And to point out once again, UMD is on attack. And although I really did want to see them hone in um, on their confidence and aggression on attack, there is a whole nother half to this game where they're going to be able to sit back a little bit and force pace to make those uh, push decisions you know, into them. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's kind of felt like pace has had like full control of this game but like you said i mean five three 
that's not a bad scoreline. If they're able to just go round for round for pace uh, at this point, I mean, yeah, a, a 5 7 half on such a defender side map is perfectly fine. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see uh, who's, uh, who's going to be able to take the, these next couple rounds. Yeah, and UMD is just nowhere near mid anymore, knowing that that operator is sitting um, up top on Cat there, and instead they're going to push towards A pretty aggressively and is going to force the pace defenders to back up a little bit, hopefully creating a little bit of space as Gojo comes in, finding the first pick of this round. Yeah, just, say, uh, just saying to that right now, absolutely not. You're, you know, fool me once, shame on you. Uh, but... You know, the the second time that they go for this for this high aggro play, Goji's just ready for it, playing uh just playing all the way back, just making sure that they don't die and that they don't lose control of the site. But speaking of control, I mean we, we see we see that operator coming down, can fully shut down any kind of push. The the smoke is gonna force him out of position a little bit and as well as as well as that, that KO knife. Are we gonna see are we gonna see some picks? No, he he misses the shot unfortunately. But we see the the Killjoy ultimates coming out as well, so UMD is absolutely not in uh, not safe for this round. Yeah, the KJ ultimate is countered by the Sova ultimate. It's actually going to destroy the lockdown um, for the UMD side. Yeah, so uh, UMD does have uh, does have four people, but they're all on site except for except for Savani, able to take a great off angle in that uh, in that smoke, and they're able to find one getting sprayed out. Uh, and just forced to go back to site now, all four of them, like shooting fish in a ba uh, barrel, but UMD, you know, these are fish that absolutely have guns back, and Zora's able to find two, and now it's a 2v1. Yeah, it's all to Trace and Laura here to work as a team, they know the positioning of the last pace defender is, um, runway here, and it looks like they're just gonna be, you know, shooting through this wall just to, you know, buy time a little bit in order for the bomb to detonate and for UMD to take that round. Trace, uh, uh, remarkable, uh, remarkable play. Looks like the owner was kind of scrambling for any way to to escape that blast radius, and somehow, uh, even though Trace was the one on site, and uh, it felt like that Omen was the one who was watching out for exit frags. Trace is uh, Trace is going to be able to one uh, who finds the kill, and I believe gets out with her life and that weapon. So a, a great round from her. Uh, we kind of missed that, but yeah, that, if that's what happened, that's absolutely huge for Maryland. Yeah, especially being able to hold on to that gun, just the value of that cannot be overstated as it does look like it's going to help UMD secure, um, you know, decent weapons in hand, Vandals, Phantoms, and uh, once again, this Omen is um, opting to play this one way. UMD has shown aggression through that before. I wonder if they're going to opt to do that again. Again, I don't think they are want to push mid anytime soon uh, just because of what has happened there in the past with the Operator. Yeah, and it looks like Maryland is just just perfectly happy waiting for that smoke to go down. They're actually doing such a good job that the Omen just kind of gives them uh, just gives them the angle. Normally, uh, normally Omen was, you know, fighting with them to the bitter end, really, until until shots were, were traded before uh, leaving that site, but this time he just walks all the way back and it gives Maryland the opportunity to get down that KJ ultimate. Yeah, so the ultimate does come in for UMD. Beautiful molly placement as well from UMD. Great um, you know, use of utility there as UMD finds two defenders to open up the site for them. I think they're going to be able to get plant down with not much of a problem at all. They have to be aware of this <laughs> heaven defender though, I think is still gone unchecked, but they would have to walk through smoke first and Savani just um, deals with that promptly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could see the stress that that omen was under. Forced into the smoke. I think they were blinded at some point. They finally get the courage to peek out of the smoke, and they go right into a molly. And uh, unfortunately, I don't think that they were going undetected at all. Uh, as uh, Maryland up 5-1. to one. They lose one to the uh, to the sheriff, but somebody else is there to, to get the refrag. And Maryland able to equalize the rounds now, 5-5. Five to five. Yeah, I was going to say, great job for Maryland. Just like staying in this game it's all even now it's 5-5 five, five. they could very well go into the half um up if they are able to come away with these next two rounds or hopefully at the very least tied if worse comes to worse which i think is a great position to be especially uh, going on to the defensive side yeah i was saying you know I, I was saying that maryland you know what the best thing that they could hope for was like a five set it was like a five seven split and now it's the absolute worst case scenario for them going into this half. So they found they found themselves in a great situation uh, to take this uh, to take this first half. It looks like we are going to see a fast push from Maryland onto this B site. Um, 
utilizing their ultimates, Gojo finds the opening pick there, but Dark has gone unchecked in this corner, and UMD is going to pay for it as Dark continues her push onto lane. Yeah, unfortunately, the Soviet drone was there, but it just it just didn't turn in time, as uh, as, as Maryland is going to is going to lose one to that to that Reyna, but they're still up. They're, they're still even three to three. So, oh, I spoke too soon. Is uh, Pace is able to find two, and unfortunately, Gojo just not able to find uh, find the third there, as uh, Pace is going to be able to take that round. We really haven't seen these long drawn out rounds like we are seeing on split if the spike gets planted in the rounds i feel like the round is over very quickly after that whereas as on split i feel like things were like a lot um slower paced once the ball was planted it was more of a slower retake so it's interesting to see how the game plan switches up a little bit on it on um ascent yeah absolutely and i, I think that that's a, uh, at least at least personally i think that comes down to just how uh, just the fundamentals of the map? There's just so many angles that you need to check, and that and you know, especially those draw those you know drawn out rounds that you're talking about happen with that pillar on B site on split a lot. So nothing like nothing like that on this map. So uh, the teams are free to kind of speed up their retakes and make sure that time isn't an issue. The only thing that they need to worry about is of course getting those things. Yeah. Once again, UMD far away from mid site and now with that chamber ultimate initialized i'm sure they are uh, not too eager to go mid especially and it looks like they're opting towards a but they have to be aware of this omen who's sitting wine it could be deadly if they're not um aware or at least check wine um as they make their way onto a through a main yeah so we do see the chamber ultimate fortunately for maryland uh it's less dangerous than normal because normally they have you know it could be anywhere now they know at least it was on B site because they had control of that that A orb, and he had to get an orb for the ultimate anyway. So, um, you know, Maryland just just staying far far away from from B because they know that's where the chamber ultimate the chamber op is. And it looks like UMD is gonna swing um, towards mid where they are gonna find a pick, although a trade comes soon to follow along with it. They have not run into the chamber operator yet, which um, I think is why UMD feels confident hitting A site. And uh, unfortunately, Dark just just a second behind on, on the spray, but Omen able to find two on the spray. The, the spike goes down, but uh, they should be able to get the plan up uh, now in the 2v1 situation. Chamber's just going to sw swing out now. This is a great time while one of the uh, Maryland players is uh, is planting, but with the with the KJ turret, they now know exactly where he is, and they're going to they're gonna, uh, swing out now. The Molly forces him onto site, and the Omen's going to be able to uh, swing out. Savani taking that last round. And a 6 6 half, great place for Maryland. Yeah, like you said, this is a perfectly good place for Maryland to be right now, considering they were just a little bit had a deficit um, as they were attacking. And now on, de on defense, I think you know, they're going to really find some success in um, the way that they've been passive and how they lean into having uh, pace swing into them first. Yeah, and I think that uh, the comps really tell the story about this game. I mean, Split is a very aggressive map. And so, of course, pace, uh, clearly much more comfortable taking these high aggression angles, uh, is going had the advantage in that, in that map. But, you know, Ascent, like we were talking about, uh, is a much more slower paced, you know, information based map, and you know we're we're seeing that uh, that this Maryland team having that information uh, is uh, at least this first half are able to say what I would say is an advantage. Yeah, especially with Sova on the UMD side, I think that's going to be a huge deal, especially on defense, um, as it looks like now. But uh, it looks like Pace is going to slowly creep up towards mid site, very. Uh, scrunched together as a team looks like they're looking towards a market where Gojo um, and one other player are left just to defend B site for yeah, as long as they possibly can. Yeah, you you gotta be you gotta be careful for for that UMD swing. They they had the flash and they're able to find one, but unfortunately uh, they're not gonna be able to find the second. It's now just Sova on this back site as he's gonna go down to that arena. Great time and catching him on the reload as now uh, UMD down. Uh, three, uh, three to two. But you know, keep in mind that that gecko is very, very low. One shot, and he could even uh, heal up that Reyna. They're gonna check for him and find him, and it's a two v two now. Yeah, Savati with the right click just 
coming in huge for U of D, especially because that gecko is so low, but just the positioning is not ideal there for UMD, and it's all up to Savani. She has I a think smoke to see the open. She's just, just sticking it through the smoke. Uh, Omen's going to get off, and it uh, forces Reyna off as well, but the right clicks, the classic is a little bit of an advantage. Omen's going to be able to find it. Great job just, just playing, you know, peekaboo. Where am I? And he's going to be able to get... Uh, Omen's going to be able to take that round. Yeah, great 1v1 from Savani there. Playing it really smart, you know, peeking out, having that classic in hand. Like you said, close range, it is an advantage when you can just yes. right-click. Um, so, yeah, great round. Hopefully, UMD can work off of that, um, you know, especially when you win a 1v1, huge momentum boost. Yeah, I, I am really curious um, whether or not uh, Savani was, it was, it would have been safe to just stick the diffuse. I know. I it definitely looked like she was uh, thinking about it. She stayed on the spike for for just half a second after it went over that that halfway point. But opts to uh to ju just play it safe and, and trust her aim as she she is able to win the one v one. So, uh, you know, I'm sure she's feeling very happy about her decision. Yeah, and Pace made a lot of noise. Um towards a site but it looks like they're gonna pull a fast rotate either towards mid or all the way back towards b if they so choose um they definitely did not want to push into that omen utility blocking off a site i think that's what prompted this decision yeah but you know you can see they, they took the fast rotate off but they're already putting two more people back onto that a main it looks like the reina might even be sneaking back that way too so um it could be it could be a trick within a trick um so we see Pace now going for more of a more of a default sp uh, spread. Um, you know, players of uh, uh, players ultimately working their way down mid this time instead of do that a main uh, that a main choke. And unfortunately, Dark just barely missing the timing. But at the very least, she is going to be able to get the info that the site is clear, but not quite. As Laura decides to double back, and she fights two for it. Yeah, some. You know, crucial picks from Laura mid there, shutting down any hopes of an A execute. For the moment from Pace, they're going to have to work with pistols in hand against this UMD team that's bunched up here in tree. They have eyes on this entry, and they're not going to let any Pace players through as Laura finds a 4k that round. Huge round for UMD. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm curious what triggered that... Uh was it was it just Laura's spider sense, or, or did somebody call like, hey, maybe we're we're over rotating? But uh, decides to double back and just beautiful shots from Laura, able to get uh, able to get a four for the round. Yeah, like you said, great job for UMD, not completely over rotating towards that B site because that would have led Tree completely open for Pace, and they would have had access to A site. So great awareness there. Yeah, absolutely. L like you said, I mean, I I I felt that it felt as. You know, even though Dark missed the uh, missed that that rotate off of Tree, um, you know they still were able to get the info that hey, there's nobody in this. Uh, you know, there's there's nobody in this area. We might be able to get sight for free, and you know, fortunately, Marilyn is was able to have the wherewithal to realize, you know, we're giving up the space. We can't we can't do that for nothing. So double back, and it, it pays off in spades. And I really like Toxic's positioning Y, and I think this is going to come in huge in a second here as she kind of has the uh, uh, option to swing into pretty much all five of the players, but no, she gets swung into instead and cannot come out with a kill. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, great crosshair placement, but just not ready for the for the jump peak as as the Kojo was able to, uh, you know, get, get quite literally the jump on her, but Gojo able to find one and... You know, if you're able to get a, a, a weapon here, that could that could turn the tides very quickly in this round. Yeah, we can see Trace also has the Bulldog in hand, so so both UMD players are essentially kitted up for this round, um, as if it was as if it was any other. This this could be as good of a round as any to get a to get a two v four clutch. Yeah, this is certainly not out of reach for UMD, considering that they do have weapons to work off of. And Gojo opens things up, gets traded, and Trace unfortunately right behind her. So pretty close round from UMD, um, but they are not going to have, um, you know, the economy uh, blooming at this point as it is going to take most of their money to uh, scrap together a full buy. Yeah, I mean, it, they went for a half buy, and to be honest, I don't disagree with them at all. They That round was really, if they were able to find the Killjoy instead of the Killjoy finding them, that could have been a 2v2 and... We've seen how strong Maryland is in their 2v2s. I don't think they've lost a single one this round. We, we were seeing in the clips beforehand as well how strong they are. So, uh, yeah, it, it ended up being, you know, three players left alive for pace, but it could have easily gone to zero either. 
Gojo looks like she's uh, going to be just a little bit aggressive towards B Garage here, potentially looking to swing into some attackers if um, she gets the read from the Sova utility that they're there. Yeah, she's got her turret as well, so... Uh, I, I think she's just banged on the fact that maybe you know they're gonna be they're gonna be looking at that and actually it almost it almost worked this gecko killed the turret and then you know just looked away just uh, you know pace was absolutely not ready for uh for that uh, for that player to be there ready for the peak but unfortunately uh just not quite going to be able to get the timing as they now opt for uh, a, a mid hit and it looks like they're trying to go through tree yeah I think um, Gojo closing down that site really forced um, Pace towards mid and now it looks like it's forcing them towards tree where Laura is sitting with utility to slow things down and also a Vandal in a hand to follow things up with. Yeah, I'm starting to feel like Laura really might just have a little bit of a spider sense there, realizing that all the players are there in tree, and she throws the molly, which forces them to go, uh, they, they end up going to market um, instead of that tree side that they were stacked up for. So now with the time taking down 15 seconds, they need to make their they need to make a rush now. Gojo able to find the o Omen trying to make a play by themselves, and that's exactly what UMD needs. Uh, Chase is able to find uh, one, two now as Savani gets in all the action as well. Unfortunately, Savani's going to go down, but Laura's right there to to pick up the slack, and that's going to be a great round for UMD. That was such a strategic round for UMD. They really just played with pace and had them exactly where they wanted them, you know, shutting down A site, knowing that they're rotating towards A, putting more UMD defenders towards A, shut or mid, shutting down mid, forcing the rotate through B, through market specifically, just perfectly executed strategically. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, uh, you know, joking around a little bit, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, but seriously, I mean, I'm, I'm really curious, you know, what is going on with UMD's comms that they've been able to to get a read on the on these tree pushes from from Pace perfectly without really any info telling them that they uh, that they should keep an eye out for it. So just doing a great job of keeping map control. That's something that I think they struggled on that that first game a little bit, and they've been just, they've been doing a great job of of um, you know f you know fixing the problems that they had. Yeah, once again, aggression tree. This time it's going to creep up into heaven where Toxic is left all alone to fight off these pace defenders. No, Gojo's right behind her there to help things out, but still um, not able to fully recoup the damage done by pace attack. Yeah, I, I mean, and I mean, you can just see that U of D was absolutely not ready for, for this kind of push as, you know, several players were just kind of looking in the wrong direction and, uh, and as well Toxic caught out as her uh, as her uh, like um, ability was was running out so um yeah that was a, that was a great read for for pace realizing like you know umd has been doing a great job of shutting down like our late round pushes through tree but that probably means that they're not really as ready to use their you know use their abilities and their utility for the earlier for the early half of the round and the, the read absolutely pays off as they're going to be able to take a round for it and we are still such at a tight margin here. This game hasn't gotten away from either of these teams yet, and it's continued to just be really neck and neck. Yeah, UMD was finally looking like they like they might get some momentum, and it paid, you know that thrifty from Pace able to, to shut down any kind of momentum they had, and both teams kind of forced to to return to uh, to, uh, to square one in terms of building the momentum that they're gonna need for this game. And it does look like Pace is grouped up towards mid site once again, making some presence tree where Laura um, is sitting in her favorite spot there. Yeah, so you know Pace, Pace trying to get the smoke, and uh, you could see that the, that the Killjoy was hoping to get some kind of uh, some kind of push into that tree area, but Laura just doing a great job using her using her utility to to force. Uh, pace to, to try uh, try a different round as they're forcing the market again. They're just not ready for KJ Gojo. Uh, finding a, finding a, a space fi uh, just on top of some boxes. A nice off angle, and her turret gonna be able to give Laura a free uh, a free uh, counter pick. And uh, unfortunately, KJ is going to be able to find Laura, but again. KO with that ability. If they're if UMD is able to get to her in the next couple seconds, uh, we could see UMD uh, completely back to safety. 
You know, it does look like Laura was able to be revived, which is a huge deal, especially as Savani falls, puts things at a 2v2 retake, certainly not undoable for UMD. They just have to work around this KJ utility. It's going to be ever-present here on this B site, along with that KJ lockdown. It's going to make things really hard. It looks like UMD is opting to push into the KJ ultimate rather than back away from it. Um, or actually, no, it looks like they will decide to back away from it as the spike still has a good bit of time left on it. Yeah, I think they got the call to, to push right through, but unfortunately that molly just completely shut down any kind of plan. And we see that we see both players able to find one and they're going to be able to get to the spike in time. I think they've got actually plenty of time as UMD, you know, I, I this is what I've been talking about all game. The 2v2 presence, I don't, they, they can't lose it. Yeah, I was going to say. You called it. Just We've seen such consistency from this team in 2v2 situations. I think they're just really good at communicating with each other and playing, like swinging out in perfect timing. Just It's been paying off huge for UMD, keeping them in this game. Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 and you could, I mean, it goes to show, uh, you know, we saw in that round, both of the members from Pace fell at the same exact time. And I think that that just talks about the the team the team play that UMD has in these two v two situations, uh, able to shut down all of the all of the possible angles, and they clear it so well. So uh, that's going to give them a, an advantage, and they might be you know getting back some of the momentum they might have lost from that from that fifty round. Yeah, UMD, two rounds up. They are sitting in a great spot if they're able to carry through this momentum um, as we near the end of this second round or game here and it does look like pace is opting to hit a main um as they really haven't done too much um this round and they will use the ko uh, sorry the gecko ultimate to help them do that and especially um using that ko uh, gecko ultimate to wean off laura there as she has certainly been causing issues for the pace attack yeah they're able to find ko but unfortunately you know that uh that that rain up from umd is there uh toxic just able to shut down any kind of uh, any kind of push that they might have to to you know get, uh, you know punish UMD for for uh, getting sh caught by that gecko ultimate and in fact as he as he took a headshot from a phantom leaving him on 10 HP Laura is able to just get a nice easy pick and you know Gojo and Trace are both able to find one as it's now a 4v1 for uh, pace and Emder Pearl is not going to be able to find any. Great teamwork from UFD once again. They're just using their utility in such great like uh, like combinations with each other. It's just been really, you know, expert util usage here from UFD. I think that's had a big uh, part into putting them at 11 rounds here, close to closing it out. If they could just push through these last couple of rounds. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think it, I think that their teamwork even goes past uh, past their utility. They just they just have. It really feels like they just have each other's backs, you know. It, I I think that the Reina was was really, or not the Reina, the Gecko that that last round was really hoping that they'd be able to to get that, uh, get that pick onto, uh, onto Laura. But, you know, uh, a Toxic just making it completely impossible, and and in fact the haste that we saw from from Gecko ended up being his own downfall, as a. Now we see Pace is going to be opting for for a B hit, kind of giving up on A, um, which, you know, UMD kind of had a lock on that site, so that, it just doesn't surprise me at all. And that's a great Sova dart from UMD. I do want to highlight that. I believe that caught um, at least four of those Pace attackers, which had a huge part in slowing down things, um, as we see right now. And Trace, um, who is the one who had that amazing dart uh, coming in with the first pick of this round. Yeah, absolutely. You can't you, you can't talk about uh, uh, Tracy enough in the in the opening of this round. But Gojo, uh, you know, flipping the script on the on the Reina a little bit last round. Uh, in the last half, it was Reyna who was trying to force themselves into uh, into UMD spawn, and now uh, and Gojo, I believe, was the one who shut who shut them down as well. So uh, now Gojo taking that left. that spawn advantage as UMD is now up five to three in this round. They they fall again to that to the operator, but you know as the time is ticking down twenty seconds, as you know Spike is really nowhere near any of the sites. It's gonna be very very hard for Pace to get any kind of any kind of push, and I think that they're just gonna they're just gonna save weapons. Ten seconds left. UMD has been so good at making pace run out of time. We've seen this happen just a couple times 
as UMD has been on defense. And I think that's exactly what their game plan is, just kind of stall or make pace, just run out of options, force rotates, and then quickly counter rotate to shut down that site, just has been eating up this time. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that Pace kind of had the right idea two rounds ago. I mean, I know that they kept, they just kind of felt like they walked into a meat grinder a little bit as they as they lost almost a, almost a flawless round. But at least they were decisive on that round as they you know they used that gecko ultimate and they just they just said in the beginning of the round, hey, we're gonna push on to A, and that's what got them through split, that kind of decisiveness and that that aggression. And so uh, I feel like they just kind of lost it this game. We, we were talking about it before this game started. Maryland needs to mess with their confidence, and I think that's exactly what's happened. Yeah, and it's going to actually put them at game point here if they're able to close out this one. And so, able to find one, not quite able to find the second one, as UMD is going to be able, is going to find uh, themselves in a disadvantage for really the first, uh, the first time in a while. Uh, and yeah, so two to three, forced to, forced to take this rotate, but they do have the silver, the intel, so... They are absolutely not out of this round quite yet. Yeah, there is a lot of chamber utility heaven, which is going to pose issues for UMD, especially with that chamber position to heaven. But Laura hits an amazing shot, um, which certainly makes things very possible for UMD, although she doesn't have too much HP to work off of. Trace hits a great shot, but she gets traded. It's all up to Laura here, and just not enough HP to work with. Yeah, great, a great round from, uh, from that gecko, able to find four. And I think, unfortunately, even if UMD had found the Gecko, uh, he wouldn't have been able to uh, to take the round. But yeah, we see, I, I, you know, this is the first 2v2 that, that, that Maryland's lost, um, unfortunately. But, you know, they were they were still, you know, down going into that fight. They, they brought it down. It was their, their round to win, even up in, until that very last second. So, uh, you know, still they still find themselves in a 9-12 in a advantage. As long as they're able to to you know keep up keep up that strength, I mean, uh, the pace is gonna certainly get some uh, some confidence back from that round, but uh, you know they they still need to win three rounds in a row. Yes, and it looks like pace is gonna try to get some intel with the gecko ultimate. It gets shut down pretty quickly, and ultimate is invested for toxic. She peeks out with it. It looks like. Using her eye, finds one, dismisses away to find the other. Gojo is there to back her up there on this B site. And this round looks like it's headed in UMP's favor, unless Dark can pull off something uh, crazy here. Yeah, I mean, if there's if there's anybody that is going to, uh, uh, to be able to pull off a, a 5v1 clutch, I mean, I guess you want Reyna with her ultimate able to, to you know, those, uh, you know, able to go invisible and kind of, you know, uh, like get like get instead of you know one five v one five different one v ones, but yeah, I mean with that Silva making her you know making her visible through those walls and Marilyn's just able to gun her down, very very difficult to to win that as Marilyn's gonna take game one. Yeah, great job for Maryland leveling things out and sending us to three maps. Uh, we'll catch you guys for the third map to decide who wins the series. Yeah. I think by the end of Whether you're a new publisher or app developer, or if you've been around the block for a little while and you have your own ad ops team, Playwire is developing the solutions and products that are perfect for you. Ramp stands for Revenue Amplification Management Platform. But really what it does, it helps you make more money per user and it helps you simplify your business so you can just focus on what matters, which is making great content. So if you think about today's ecosystem, there's so many different pieces to run an ad tech platform. Ramp brings the entire ad ecosystem under one umbrella. Everything from centralized ad unit creation to piping in those demand sources. We lay around a DMP and we take care of your data privacy and consent management for you as well. We tie all of that together with robust analytics. Playwire really offers our publishers two different models at this point. We've got the full service model where we come in and we cover everything. And there's now our new self-service model where you can come in and you can say, I just want Playwire to take care of some of these things for me. Another thing that we've had a lot of partners do with us in the past is say, hey, maybe I have a few of my own direct campaigns that I wanna run. Or I've even got an ad ops team. Uh, I don't know whether Playwire is right for me because those people are doing a good job. We don't want to displace them in favor of Playwire. 
that's fine. We're happy to bring all the technology that we've put out there, but use it with your own team and with your own ad stack. What does that mean for you as a publisher? It means that you get to leverage all of the revenue maximization technology that we've got in place and still have all of the capabilities and all of the demand partners that you're used to working with. You can have your cake and you can eat it too. We actually do things at such scale, right? We're serving 70 billion ads a month at this point. That's a huge benefit that we're passing on to the publisher. Revenue intelligence marries human intelligence with machine intelligence. At its core, revenue intelligence is about taking all the demand that you're already getting and getting more out of it. We want to make it so that you're getting 10% more from your ad inventory without even worrying about who the advertisers are. It's based on us going in and understanding what are the places where we can put additional price pressure on. There's all sorts of situations like this where you can eke out little benefits and add them all up. You're quickly at a point where you are getting that 10, 15, 20% uplift on your revenue without having made any changes in who's actually doing the advertising. Our DMP is built from the ground up to work in a cookie-less environment and not use cookies to basically store you know, user behavior or anything like that. And it's built right into the, the ramp platform. We can tell advertisers information about user interests, but also user behavior. Do it on a massive scale. Do it in that real-time way that we also do with our revenue intelligence capabilities and also do it in a way where we can leverage the size of our network. We're trying to do everything that we can to show you every step of the process of getting an ad onto the page. That means that we've got much richer charts and graphs, a lot more ability to look at a piece of information and drill down on it. Answer that question that maybe you didn't even know that you were asking. We're trying to make you think differently, actually about your business, about how your business relates to advertising, and reveal all of that through the platform. So analytics are one big piece of it. It's a constant evolution. We're constantly updating our technology. We're constantly creating the future. It's a real challenge for publishers these days to navigate advertising technology. It seems like every six months there's some new challenge. And at Playwire, we make sure that we take all of that pain away from our publishers so they can focus on their core business of publishing. Turb Adventures take flight at STAM. Host to countless Maryland events, programs, performances, and more. Feed your body, feed your mind, feed your soul. Let your talents soar. Dance. Sing, perform, find your thing. Join more than 800 student organizations and clubs. Find community here. Leadership lives here. Art thrives here. With space to grow. We're all just kids at heart. Let your imagination fly. Compete, play, with wings on our feet. Here your spirit can fly. Here your soul lifts up. Here you remember those who came before. This is STAM. This is the center for campus life, where turf adventures take flight. You belong here. Come fly with us.
Welcome back, everybody. We are here in the game three of this series. We are hoping for a nail biter. Uh, talking at the beginning of this, I was ho I was hoping for for a close game, and we've that's exactly what we've been given. Yeah, I'm excited. I feel like it's been a while since I've particularly have casted a really close game like this. So the nerves are definitely here in the studio. Of course, the last game is always the most, um, you know, tense. And to ease the studio up a little bit, we just enjoyed some dino nuggets. Thank you, Chris, yet again. But yeah. I think that put a smile <laughs> on everybody's face. Um, again, you know, this team is having fun. They're here to win, but they're also, you know, I could tell just really enjoying each other's company. Yeah, and, and I mean, like, you know, we can talk about dino nuggets all day, but the, at the end of it, just something, something good to get their minds off of, off of the game is absolutely good. And uh, I, I'm hearing we're getting season <laughs> dino nuggets. There they are. There's some orange laces too. Wow. I'm, I'm surprised there are that many of it. There was, there was a bit of a frenzy for the dino nuggets. Yeah, when we left <laughs> the dino nuggets, it was a full plate. So I, <laughs> I'm sure there was a bit of a frenzy there. Yeah, look at those. They look great. They tasted great yeah, too. Yeah, you could see how juicy they were. Those are, uh, those are some great dino nuggets. But um, yeah, so. I think that's exactly what Yungi needs. These can be such stressful games where, I mean, you're just trying to, you've got the victory in your hand. You just need to win one game, uh, but both teams are just trying to, to hold on. It feels like it's more about, it, it feels less about winning and more about just surviving. So it, it's good to, to have a nice, a nice little mental break before such, what can be such a stressful game. Yeah, and I feel like it's been a while since I've actually seen some gameplay on Bind. I'm really excited. Um, to see Bind, I like, you know, they made a bunch of changes a while back, and I think now it's definitely a lot more playable with those changes. Mm -hmm. But it'll be interesting to see how the team works the TP and, you know, how agent selects might be different. We might um, see a Sage. I think Sage is a good pick on Bind, so um, I'm, I'm rooting for a Sage pick, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Are, yeah, if we see a Sage pick, more than likely it's going to be coming up on that UMD side. I would not be surprised to see uh, a lot of uh, more of that like uh, split level of aggression here on this map because you can get like you can teleport and just get momentum into a round and just completely flip their script like that. So uh, it, I w we're definitely going to be seeing rays from both teams, um, but I think that we're going to see a, a team built around the rays coming out from pace while whereas uh umd will likely have the raise um be be an entry for a team that otherwise might be might be lacking in that i think that's going to be the difference that we see and i think we honestly are i wouldn't be surprised to see more long range weapon fights yet again i know bind isn't all of that big of a map but i think we have been seeing pace just really lean into having the chamber pick i think is a very real possibility on bind yet again, especially from um, a he um, a heaven is a great place to have a long weapon, long range weapon. So is B long, B fountain. Yeah. Those are all places I can see pace playing a chamber specifically. Yeah, I mean it, it might be hard uh, depending on how UMD, you know, if we see the omen again, um, you know, of course you only have two smokes and there's a lot of angles you need to cover, but uh, you know, if pace is able to get a good read, you might even see one. Uh, just like in the back of sight of uh, of that B site, as as well as the A site, both sites are actually decently playable with an op, especially if we have uh, that chamber teleport, which I would say is very very likely. Yeah, I'm also waiting to see if we get yet another Reina pick. There has been a Reina pick in every game of the series so far. And I think Bind is a pretty good candidate for yet another Reina pick. So I, I certainly think that's also a possibility. I think we're seeing a lot of like similar compositions from either side so far. Yeah, absolutely. We saw we saw a little bit of a, a, a few swaps. We saw, of course, the Sova from UMD that we didn't see on Split. But um, I mean, Ascent is such a good map for Sova that... Um, Honestly, I'm just surprised that we didn't see one coming out from Pace. Yeah. Um, I would say that I, I I would expect to summarize very similar comps to Game One, but we'll only time will tell. I think we'll be hopping into this match any second now. Here it is, and an insta lock of um, of deadlock. 
that I was not expecting, especially as the Sentinel pick um, for Bind. I think uh, Cypher is a great pick on this map. It looks like UMD is going to um, hover the Cypher. But yeah, I'm very interested to see how Deadlock gets used on Bind. I haven't seen too much of her in any game we've casted here in the studio. Yeah, and it, I feel like... so. To be uh, to Deadlock's credit, I would I would be very, I would expect to see it on A site. It can kind of shut down U-Haul pretty well, actually. Just the just the wall by itself. You also might see it showers, uh, just so that uh, they can kind of funnel UMD in. It's not a horrible pick, but I don't know. I I kind of agree with you. I think that Cipher is just kind of a, a better pick. The ability to uh, to have those those trip mines that are you know unexpected and connect. Uh, you know, a free. If you walk into the wrong trip line, that can essentially be uh, a kill uh, in and of itself. So, uh, I mean, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, definitely surprised to see the deadlock. Yeah, and like you said, Ray's certainly a comfort pick for UMD and a Viper too. And once again, we do see the Reina and the Yoru pick. Wow. Let's talk about this real quick. Um, Pace running the double duelist, Yoru and Reyna, both not traditional duelist picks by any means. I'm, We have a real game on our hands here. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, we're talking about the double duelist pick from Pace, but uh, UV is a double smoke pick. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's a great, I, I think that's, you know, a fine idea. There, especially on A site, but on B site as well, there are just so many angles that you can take that can just kind of be hard shut down by a good Viper Wall or a good Brim Smoke, as well as there are some, some really good lineups on this map. So um, I don't disagree with it, but very surprising to see. Uh, you know, UMD especially has been taking some very just like reasonable, normal team comps that you might see in any random game. So... Uh, I'm really interested to see what happens once they kind of step out of the box. Yeah, and it's interesting because I think each team just has such different strengths um, in terms of composition. UMD really leaning towards a defensive-sided comp, double smokes, a cypher pick as well, single duelist. And um, on the other hand, you have Pace who is leaning towards a more attack-sided composition, it looks like. So especially with UMD starting on attack, or on defense rather, and Pace starting on attack, it'll be kind of, a, I think a clash is going to happen of <laughs> util. Um, so that's certainly something to look forward to here. Yeah, absolutely. But a bit of a, you know, unstoppable object versus immovable, sorry, unstoppable force and immovable object. So uh, I'm already a little bit on the edge of my seat and the game hasn't even started yet. The walls are going to fall any second now. And we're gonna be see we're gonna end up seeing uh, the first push coming out from Pace is coming out all the way on that B long side, and that's really interesting to see a, a, a bit of a longer angle, um, kind of goes against you know the high aggression that you can get from Reyna and, and from Yoru. So uh, sorry Yoru. So you know they they go for the teleport immediately, and th this is what I was talking about. They were able to flip the script on that on, on this so quickly, and UMD only two players on this on, on this. Uh, a site as uh, Pace is going to start planting any second now. Reyna able to find two for the round. And yeah. Yeah, that TP changes everything. Being able to just quickly get over there so, you know, in, in no time. And there was only really one UMD defender there um, who just had to deal with it and, you know, try to take down one or two. But you, you're not going to be able to stop all five of those attackers from TP all at once. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, we were talking about the deadlock. Able to fully shut down uh, any point. Oh, great shot from Loras. UMD goes from a four, down 4v3 to up 3v1. Um, Gojo is forced off of the off of the spike by that uh, by that Viper, but they're able to take the first round. I think this is the first round they've taken all series, and you, you can see just high spirits for UMD. Yeah, th that is exactly how you want to start off. This round, if you're UMD, just really honing in and just settling into your util usage, figuring out how to, you know, work that cipher and um, the viper, you know, on the same map. Just it's it's just made all the difference for UMD, and hopefully that's going to put them off to a great start uh, to go into the second round here. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, already you can see a completely different play style. Um, 
coming out uh, coming out from pace. I mean, uh, they still are going to have access to that teleporter, so they can go for a similar strategy. But they're just going to uh, uh, probably uh, barrel down uh, this this A main as soon as uh, as soon as they take contact. So we'll let's wait and see. We see the the uh, grenade is going to come out. It's going to do a little bit of damage to pace and it forces them all to back up all the way and scramble a little bit. So UMD able to take uh, able to take a uh, a little bit of a of a uh, the front seat in this in this first uh opening round yeah umd certainly has a on lockdown right now and pace hasn't rotated much off of that they just have one yoru that's lurking towards b site where only one umd defender stays but now it looks like um at least one or two more of the pace attackers are gonna head towards b site slowly but in general, things are pretty quiet to start things off. Yeah, we can see the deadlock starting to walk walk away over there, and now the rest of the team is starting to follow, leaving just that uh, just that sky, I believe, from pace to uh, uh, to keep presence on uh, on that uh, a site. But now Yoru finds himself on the site, not ready for the not ready for the viper, I'm sure, but the viper wasn't ready for him either, as uh, the toxic toxic is gonna go down, and pace gets full site control to open up this round. Yeah, just crazy timing there for that Yoru TP to actually, you know, not be a fake and TP onto site in a 1v1 there. Unfortunately, Toxic is not able to find that kill, but now it looks like um, UMB is trying to retake, although they would have to get through this deadlock wall first. Looks like they were just able to break it, but Gojo gets caught looking in the wrong direction, but... Trace and Laura here uh, making some waves um, from CT. Their health is looking extremely dire, though, and it just takes one bullet from a Spectre um, to finish off these UMD defenders, and looks like that is exactly how it will play out for Pace. Yeah, I mean, UMD was up 3-2 to two there, and they, they kind of had control of that site, but, I mean, it, it felt like... Uh, it felt like Pace had the advantage in that. Spectres coming out. I mean, if, if it was Vandals or something, that would be that would be a whole other story. But um, yeah, just so easy to uh, to clean up there for uh, for Emder Pearl there. Just um, you know, just taking a uh, really just feel, it feels like you know mopping up the remnants of UMD rather than uh, gunning through gunning through an army. So uh, looks like. Trace is going to be aggressive into showers here. Not going to make any contact because I think she got the read that there was uh, more than one of them there pushing her in showers. Yeah, she I think she was peeking out a little bit and she just doesn't want anything to do. Of course, Pace has the has the weapons advantage. Uh, Maryland uh, ended up losing their their uh, force round, and now a uh, great shot from Laura, but she's not going to. She's not even going to be able to pick up that gun, and uh, the Reyna just you know running her down. Now UMD down two to four down weapons. The plant is down as well. This is gonna be a very hard round for for UMD to to call their way back from. Yeah, they're a very you know at a disadvantage in terms of their players. But regardless, Toxic starts to open things up with a sheriff in hand. Although the damage has certainly been done on her side, but Gojo and Toxic are gonna double swing the Reyna into lamps, hoping to take some space there. And we're at a two v two. This is certainly doable for UMD considering the sky is very low. And Gojo's just gonna clean up that sky. And oh, it's just so close for UMD. But the Brim is able to just take advantage of the HP deficit. Yeah, they they were stumbling across that finish line, but unfortunately, uh, the brimstone, the final boss, uh, he had his stim down. He had the he had the better weapon than that vandal, and you know UMD was able to get to it, but the time was taking down the whole time that they were taking that retake, and unfortunately, it was just it was just too much for them to overcome. Very very close though. They and we you know we've been talking about this team play the entire time. Normally they've been you know taking different angles. Uh, but this time they were just taking the same angle together. I don't know if it if it threw pace off the the aggression that UMD was was using or just uh, just great plays from UMD. But they were almost able to claw uh, claw their way back from that from that disadvantage. And yet again, we're seeing neck and neck competition here like one team it's going back and forth in between who's taking these rounds anybody's game still at this point unless um umd uh beefs up their defense um and stops pace in their tracks as it looks like they're heading towards a hookah push yeah so we're, we're seeing an execute come out now from uh from pace and we're, we're actually seeing the deadlock getting a lot of uh getting a lot of use out of their abilities the uh yeah but again you know 
what they get from Deadlock. They lose uh, from that. Uh, they lose from that. Um, Cipher. I mean, and you know, Cipher is able to get. He's able to get two, and he's also able to hand uh, hand Kojo a kill on that on that Viper on site. So. Uh, UMD, yeah. uh, with the advantage now, two, up 2-3, two to three, they are going to be able to get the plant down paces, but UMD, you know, for the first time, uh, they're they're up in, in manpower, and they're also, uh, they're also very, very healthy, so uh, this, is their, this is their best chance to, to win so far. They, yeah, the odds are in their favor as they're retaking. Um, they had an ultimate, it looks like uh, that ultimate didn't find anybody, but Trace certainly did, cleaning up both of the remaining two pace players to take that round for UMD. Yeah, I mean, I think that I, I, I think that Araka is right at, was going to land right at um, uh, right at that deadlock's feet, but Trace was just there to uh, to uh, to pick it up beforehand. So, uh, yeah, great, great stuff from from UMD again, playing with the team, uh, and again, uh, like I was talking about last round, instead of you know splitting up. Their retakes have really just been uh, been like one organized blob, and it's been working out great for them. So things are level here, two and two. It looks like UMD is opting to be um, aggressive out of showers. Yeah, we're gonna see the flashbang out, and uh, uh, flashbang comes out from that from that through that viper wall as well. Laura, uh, Laura, they're hoping to follow up, but unfortunately, uh, they're able to get uh, get a read on the on the play just uh, just by you know. Getting a little bit of vision through that wall, so not going to be able to find anybody. But they're they're able to buy a little bit of time now, as uh, and as you know, normally you can kind of run into showers and uh, pace is only crawling through now. And regardless of knowing that there are UMD defenders holding down this A side, looks like pace is going to push forward and try to use some of their utility to their advantage as Toxic's able to find the first pick of this round. Laura soon to follow as well, which is going to force Pace to back up and stop them in their tracks. Yeah, we see the, the raise grenade come down and, I mean, what are you going to do if you're Reyna? You know, that corner is a great place to hide if, you know, we saw that she was stunned by uh, by the Seekers from, um, from the sky uh, out of Maryland and she was, you know, forced to hide in that corner. And the, the corner's great for that, but it's not very good for surviving bombs. Is, uh, Kojo having a little bit of fun. Left. I don't know if uh, <laughs> maybe a little bit of a dance party, maybe uh, maybe just uh, keeping the wrist nice and warm. But, uh, you know, certainly looks like they're having a good time, and that's, that's great to see. And yeah, Pace has to make a decision here where they want to hit. Looks like they're leading towards A main here, but time is ticking down. They only have 10 seconds, seconds to pull left. something off. I will not be surprised if they just opt One to save here. Remaining. But Laura Spy is like a. stopping any hopes of them saving. It doesn't look like Pace is opting to save unless, yeah, they're just going to hide in teleporter. But Laura might send a Roomba in there. Yeah, she wants, she wants a little bit more. Unfortunately, the, the Roomba isn't going to get it. If you, and if you don't know where, where that member is, there's basically no point. And, and falling through the teleporter, it's very likely that you that you die on, in, in it, and you just have no idea where where that member is. So, it's it's per perfectly fine just to leave one alive, and you know just just take your round and be happy with that. And I'm sure I'm sure UMD certainly is. So, uh, going into this next round, looks like uh, Pace is going to be taking a, a B-sided attack, going for that uh, going for that fountain side. Uh, as well, they're gonna put two hookah, but more uh, more people on that on that fountain, and so we could definitely see some sort of teleporting strats if you if, if you're able to, to keep the mass together. Uh, but we're seeing the Yoru ultimate getting all the way onto site. He's, he's now getting that info and relaying it to his team. So uh, a great situation. Here comes the flash. Are we gonna be able to see uh, any picks? Uh, not from but not from Yoru, but he's able to assist. Uh, he's able to assist the team as they're able to find three, only losing one in the process, and that's going to be full site control for uh, base. Yeah, and there were just not a lot of UMD players stacked on A site for the majority of that round. I feel like UMD placed most of their defenders A site, and that is, I think, what led Pace to get so much space so easily. Yeah, a, a great a, a great flash from Dark. We were talking about whether or not this Yoru was going to be able to provide the value that they needed, but so far it, it's been doing a great job. It was able to get the info. It was able to get the flash uh, the flash assist as well. Um, there were several players from UMD fully flashed, and so uh, the, yeah, the Yoru is doing a, a great job that round. It really shows why 
they're uh, they're opting to go for him rather than a more traditional character. This goes here. Yeah, and it looks like UMD has actually switched up who they're placing on each site. The cipher setup is um, alternating pretty regularly between A and B. I think that's pretty smart because it's gonna, you know, stop the predictability of it all. And, you know, a pace doesn't know where that setup might be and they're gonna have to work around it. Yeah, I mean, we, we were seeing a similar tactic with pace where they were putting that, uh, they were putting that chamber in different places every round that they had that, that off so that he could just get a free pick. But as a similar thing, I mean, if you keep that Cypher in, in different places, I mean, Cypher can get can get a free pick just as well as um, yeah. can get a free pick just as well as Chamber with his op. Uh, if you get if you get the right uh, capture with the um, if you get the right capture with the trip mine, but uh, unfortunately, UMD not gonna be able to find anybody as they go down uh, down to a two v two. But this is this is where they shine. So if UMD uh, needs to clutch, this is the time to do it. And Laura, who found three that round. Um, gets killed off the bat there trying to retake. It doesn't look like her and Trace were quite grouped up enough in order to have the 2v1 swing advantage there. And I think Trace is just um, looking to take one fight at a time as she's slowly creeping up towards B site where Bomb has been planted. Yeah, but you can see the way that, that Pace is playing this. They're absolutely not going to give that to her. As soon as uh, as soon as Chase peeks out and, and, and tries to fight the uh, uh, fight the deadlock, we're going to see the sky peak with a beautiful spray transfer from Trace. And you can see uh, you can see her teammates are very, very proud of her. Why wouldn't you? A beautiful 2v1 clutch and UMD able to able to clean up that round up 42 now. Insane clutch from Trace there. Her face and her teammates' face says it all. That is the person who you want on your team there in that situation if it's a 2v1. Just, you know, able to quickly spray transfer like that, having the confidence to walk in there and, you know, take on those two fights at the same time. Huge confidence boost for Trace this round should be, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And and something that's interesting to point out, I think, it, at, at least for me when I'm playing Sky, if you're ever going to peek a corner where you know a, 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 an enemy is, Generally, the play is to just do a quick flash before they can react and get the free get the free pick. But Trey's able to to realize, you know, there's probably somebody around this corner, but if there is, that means that somebody else is going to swing probably from that container. So what if I flash the container first and then just win the win my one v ones, and then I can get the other player and get the one v I get the two separate one v ones, and that's exactly what happens. So great job, great job from Trace, great job from UMD, able to uh, clutch up that round. Looks like Pace is going to opt for an A push here where they are going to run into the Brimsmokes and Trace holding some aggression again and it pays off for her finding her second round, uh, kill of this round, putting Pace at a player disadvantage as they only have three people to work off of now. Savani with an Odin in hand finds one she gets traded, but Laura is there to help her out from behind. Yeah, and now it's, now it's just the sky on, on just, a, just a hair of HP. And Trace is just going to be able to pick up and get that triple for the round. Trace doing a great job these past couple rounds. And, and, and you know, you can see your teammates are very, very happy with her. Uh, they're kind of, uh, you know, putting them, putting them on her back a little bit. At, at least for a little bit. Just to maybe, uh, you know, give themselves a little break. Yeah, and you can see just smiles on all the players' faces. I know the uh, scoreline isn't really separated at this point, but I think UMD is just rolling with the vibes and the momentum that's in the studio with them right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it, it is, you know, an even rally. It is like almost an even scoreline. Uh, we, we were talking last game that 5-3 yeah. is, is perfectly fine, but again, their only losses, uh, they lost the two pistol rounds, which uh, it seems like they're a little bit weaker on the pistols, but then the five rounds after that, they only lost one. So they're they're still looking uh, they're still looking fantastic going into uh, going into uh, the the first half. And Savani smokes are gonna deter most of the pace players from pushing A site for a second round in a row. It looks like they will rotate towards B, but that is actually the heavier stacked site for the UMD defense. So I think that's exactly what UMD wanted. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Pace is is keeping that that Yoru there just because he can teleport and and quickly help out with the fight if uh, if they end up needing more men on the uh, on the attack over at at B side. But otherwise, uh, they're free to just leave her 
uh, sitting on A and, and get some presence, as well if they need to teleport, they already have somebody on site. But it looks like they're they're committing to this uh committing to this push now a, a little bit of utility. As I say that, they end up walking towards the teleporter, and they're all going to teleport, and it, we're going to see we're going to see an explosive an explosive fight coming out here as many ultimates are used from both sides. Here comes uh here comes the showstopper from Laura as well as uh that uh, uh that barrage from uh Brimstone and the shutdown all of Pace's push down to just one member that you're that we were talking about, the lurker, but where's he gonna go with that with that grenade and he's forced all the way back where Gojo is just waiting for him with open arms and you think he's gonna be able to take the round. This is very reminiscent of the type of gameplay we saw on the set of UMB just aiming to work at that clock and leave no options up for the pace side, just shutting down one side, rotating, reading the rotate, shutting down mid, and then rotating, just all this strategic gameplay with the goal of making pace run out of time. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, this is why UMD wanted the double smokes, because they, they know that if... If Pace allows them to, to just keep their setups and just shut down any kinds of attacks, Pace is going to run out of time, and UMD knows this, and that's what they're playing for. So I think this is what, this is what we're seeing this round. Um, Pace is just choosing a site, and they're just running through all the UTEL with, uh, with a well-timed execute. They're going to be able to get site without losing anybody. And unfortunately, Trace, looking at the wrong moment, just going to, just going to get timing. As now Pace finds themselves up, uh, finds themselves up five to three, with uh, yeah, and that's with bomb down, and with basically no control uh, of the site from UMD. You couldn't ask for a better position if you're Pace. Yeah, and HP not looking great on the UMD side either. Um, damage has certainly been done, and toxic falls as a result of that damage and it's all up to Gojo just get a couple here to hopefully do a little bit of damage to the economy it's not enough to win the round though yeah. able to find two and I like that you mentioned the economy we're, we're see, we can see now that um, you know even though pace is able to win this round they're still uh, they're still so low on uh, on money you know they they opt not to bring the the um, chamber that they were bringing to the other games and you know, while I like the picks that they brought, that does mean that they're not going to have that free yes. operator that they've been having in these these past couple rounds. So they're not even going to be able to full buy this round. They just won. They can't full buy. And I think that was the goal from UMD. If they were going to lose that round, at least to do some real damage to the economy and hopefully put themselves at an advantage heading into this round. It looks like Toxic's about to be met with all five of these pace attackers flooding in from Hookah, but the setup from Gojo is just brilliant and it pays off for her. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, that's what I was talking about. You get you get the right the right trigger, and that's just a free pick. Unfortunately, not quite going to be able to get the second one. That, that wall just, uh, just kind of uh, misplaced uh, and... Uh, loose, it loses track of herself, I think, in the in all the smokes. But able to find a, uh, find a second one for this round and, and keep the keep the round equalized. She's gonna pop her ultimate too. So now UMD has the information. They're gonna lose one, but they could if they could uh, get more from that information. Unfortunately, Laura is going to die coming out of that smoke, and it's just gonna be so hard. She's gonna be able to find one trace, but she's not gonna be able to repeat her former glory. And again, Trace did. Her due diligence Last there, round, at least just, you know, finding pitch. one, not letting her, not dying before doing just a little bit of damage for that side. I think that's been all the difference in their economy, uh, like you were saying. Absolutely. And we're going into a timeout again. It's, it's interesting yeah. to see these timeouts come right at the end of the yeah. half. Um, but I don't think that UMD needed a timeout before now, so I don't, I don't disagree. It was only going to help for one round. Uh, on this half, but I'm sure that they're talking about what the, what their plans are going to be going into this next half as well. So I think that uh, this time out couldn't have been timed better, actually. Yeah, UMD really has to think about how they want to form their attack, as, especially as, like you said, we're heading into the last round um, as they're on the defensive side. UMD is going to have to come in guns blazing if they want to come out with the win in this series. They have to come out with confidence and just ha with a strategic plan, especially on attack on bind. Yeah, absolutely. And I think I think confidence really is the the key word here because, uh, like, let's let's talk about their conf again. They've got the rays. They've got the sky. Other than that, they don't really have any 
uh, they don't really have any like attacking presence. You know, if the God forbid if Laura goes down in the uh, you know in the uh, in the initial like scuffle, UMD is going to have to send somebody who doesn't really want to enter as the uh, as the enter. So that's definitely something that that UMD needs to talk about now. Uh, but uh, now that the round's starting, they need to win this round. That's that's the, the game plan for sure. It does look like Case is pushing towards A side into a double hold by Trace and Laura. And it's going to pay off for them as they're able to find an early pick off this pace attack. And a second one soon to follow, but Trace and Laura do get traded, leveling things out for pace out of 3v3. It looks like they're going to be able to get spiked down with not much of a problem at all. And it does look like we're going to see a double flank for UMD. Yeah, and it looks like Zavani is going to be able to get the, get the timing and uh, gets a little bit of a, a, a grim diff. Now uh, Toxic going to be able to find the Yoru, and it's just down to this, to this Reyna. Probably the worst character that you can have in this 3v1, uh, 3v1 clutch, and she's just going to go down now. And you can see Yumdi, uh, it's just smiles as they're going into the second half, up 7-5. This is a great position for them to be in. Like you said, great position sums it all up. If anything, you want to end this half up you don't want it to be even 6-6 six, six. so great job for umd just fighting for that last round to give them um, a bit of an advantage as they head on to attack and they kind of feel out how they want to proceed on this attack like you were saying with a pretty defensive sided comp yeah absolutely so um it's it's really hard for umd we've been seeing a lot of like split pushes coming out from both of these teams where they send a couple players this way a couple players this way to get control and and you can certainly do that i i I, I wouldn't be very surprised at all to see the Cypher, uh, you know, play, uh, just lurking by himself, trying to get maybe a, a pick or two, just kind of keeping control of things, but kind of, you need to bunch up everybody else just to stay with that sky and stay with that raise because you, it's very hard to, to gain control from pace without either of those skills. Yumbi's gonna opt for a B-long push. The flash from Pace does uh, get the information that that's where the UMD players are located, although it does look like two of the UMD players are stacked towards A site. Um, trying to, I guess, beta rotation off of A site was the game plan here, as it looks like uh, Toxic and Gojo are gonna slowly walk up from showers. Yeah, they're also, you know, you know keep in mind, they're getting control of the showers area, and that's where you need control if, you, if they wanted to hypothetically teleport. They're not even going to go for that, though. They're just walking all the way around, and it looks like Laura is... Uh, Laura, the, the, the attacking... Uh, like, the attacking core of this team is just going to walk her way into U-Haul. Uh, no! Dirk thought the exact same thing I did, uh, that, that Laura's just going to walk in. She she just runs to the, runs to the wall and she's able to find one. Goju finds a second and UMD's up five to, uh, uh, up five to three. And they've got the defensive team comp as well. So they, they're looking absolutely great to, to just clean up this, this pistol round. And one thing that's important to know with the defensive side of comp that UMD has is that helps them in retakes. Yes, it makes it a little more challenging to get onto site, but once they have site, like we're seeing now, they have it really secure. Yeah, and, uh, you know, th this, is, uh, this is exactly what you're talking about. I mean, uh, you know, that, uh, that uh, I believe it was Deadlock trying to, trying to get some kind of show. beautiful shots. And it's actually a 1v1 somehow. Uh, blink and you miss it, but uh, unfortunately, uh, there's just no time left. This Tox is going to be able to get the pick. Knows that there's no way that they can escape their life. But they only have a classic. So it doesn't really matter. Yeah. And, and we're gonna see. We're gonna see these beautiful, these beautiful shots now. Um, switching several guns. I think that was three kills and three different pistols. Yeah, that was that was a great shot. Great, um, you know, awareness from pace there but regardless umd just continues to um increase their lead slowly but surely yeah absolutely and uh you know the pace has kind of been relying i think for these pistol rounds to get uh um to get some momentum i mean even after they lost that uh that uh, they lost the the very first round in this game they ended up uh just trying to barrel through and, and try to overcome the, the weapons disadvantage they, they were able to do that but um, if they're not able to do that now, I mean, UMD will have, uh, they will have the advantage of the rounds. They will have, uh, not the advantage of money this round, but certainly uh, a money advantage going into the, the next couple rounds. And we can already see that this guy, the only player that can't be healed, is very, very low. It's interesting to me that Pace keeps on using this guy to, to try to, uh, do some early damage to UMD when, 
uh, if any other player were to were to take that, you know, they'd be able to it'd be healed up right now. And what started as a two-three split from UMD is gonna lead to everybody grouped up towards B side, and Laura just did not check below Hookah there, and she paid for it. But regardless, UMD looks like they're able to get the spike down, especially with Gojo securing that next kill with uh, um, Spectres in hand. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the trial uh, Pace is trying to use that uh, that that brimstone, um, that brimstone ability to, to for that increased fire rate. The problem is, if you have pistols, you know, the maximum fire rate is already kind of how fast you can click. That that brimstone ability really doesn't do very much if you have uh, if you just have pistols. So even though, uh, so I would say that it almost worked as a detriment to. Uh, to pace, forcing them to all funnel down that same lane, uh, where where Marilyn was able to pick them off from any from all angles. Yeah, taking a look at the scoreboard here, Trace definitely coming in um, as the top frag right now at 17 kills. That says everything about um, what she's been able to do for this UMB team, and I think that's what's really give them leverage on attack is, you know, fragging out to begin the rounds with. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, we're talking about aggression from somebody else. We are seeing. A lot of aggression from this brimstone, actually putting himself fully out of cover, especially with that uh, guardian, is kind of surprising. But I don't think that they're going to be ready for it. They're not. As brimstone is going to be able to get the picks. He he falls, but oh, beautiful shot from Savani. Well stunned, able to get the headshot. I thought that I thought that they were they were the, going to be the one put down, but uh, unfortunately, uh, for, unfortunately for Pace, not. But Dark is going to come on a long play, and it looks like it almost looks like Pace is attacking now, as. Uh, as Dark finds himself uh, finds himself down. in that that hookah area, but uh, unfortunately for for Pace, they are down three uh, three to two, and Maryland's just fully able to regroup right now, and they can choose whichever site they want to push. Yeah, they got that spike back in their hand. It looks like Laura might make contact here with the oh, just timing is a little bit off, but she turned her head just in the right time in order to get a clean shot um, off of that lurking Yoru there in Hookah. And it does look like UMD will group um, back towards B site actually, um, where they're gonna force a retake, a one v three retake at that. Yeah, absolutely. And spike planted. I mean, Yoru did a good job of uh, of you know snaking his way into the into the back lines of umd and getting that first pick but then kind of what do you do because you know that there are umd players behind you and you know that they could totally be on site and you you have to choose you know there's just a 50 percent chance at best and unfortunately you know he, he isn't going to win this that coin flip so, uh, savani disconnecting again um that's actually a huge like a huge part of umd's defense with those with those lines so that could that could be a huge problem unfortunately for umd but Fortunately, they do have the Viper lineups. They have uh, they have the orb on it. They have the the Molly coming down. So U of these should be perfectly fine. In fact, Toxic just gonna be able to get a little bit of a running gun. Um, they'll be fine. Yeah, that's very unlucky. That Savani DC right in that three v one moment, especially being Brim having that utility um, is crucial in that situation. Um, so I think we might. So yeah, we're seeing a tech pause here to get out everything sorted out. Um, with Savani, but regardless, UMD still won that round. I think yeah. their utility um, being defensively sided is paying off in their ability to hold site post plant. Yeah, and I, I mean, I'm sure that you know their game plan with the uh, with the Viper plus Brim wasn't, you know, if Brim disconnects, at least we have Viper. <laughs> but uh, you know, it, that's that kind of element where they both kind of can have their lineups uh, absolutely can still come into play. I mean. I was talking about, you know, what do you do if uh, if Laura, Laura goes down on that raise? Who do you send in? But if you think about it, you can send in either Brimstone or Viper because even if you lose one of them, you still have the other. And they're able to, they'd be able to pick up uh, like we saw where, uh, where the one who goes down might not have been. And so. suddenly we find UMD at a 10v5 advantage here. It feels like this happened. Uh, quickly umg just like treading along increasing their lead round by round and now they're at a comfortable lead here and they have some leeway to just try out new things and uh you know just see see what see what sticks yeah absolutely so uh we're seeing uh we're seeing some uh, some aggression from both sides Ooh, what a dirty what a dirty flashbang i didn't know that, that you could do that <laughs> i've never seen that before in my life and uh, you know, it's going to be able to get uh, dark, uh, dark and free pick, but unfortunately for uh, for her, um, 
the game isn't happening over over on dark side. It's uh, it's completely happening over at B's. UMD is going to be able to get the plant down. Yeah, UMD has plant down. It's going to force Pace to retake once again. The utility is going to make that really hard for the Pace side. Gojo only has 7 HP to work with after making contact with Deadlock in Elbow, which is going to force her to back up a little bit. Laura there is there to support her teammates, and it's just the Deadlock left for this Pace side, who's only at under a half HP, who has to go against this UMD uh, post-plant. Yeah, and, and now that she's spot up by the Cypher, I mean, UMD knows exactly where she is. It is basically impossible. Uh, impossible to win now is the time to, the, the uh, spike ticking down, even if they had gotten that, all the kills. I mean, I don't think there was time for that at all. We're going we're gonna to see a replay now. Uh, we're going to be able to see that, that flashbang again. It was so dirty. You can see that he just sees the elbow of Toxic and able to pick it up. And, I mean, we still saw it. Toxic went down, the Viper, and... Maryland's able, while Toxic is going down, Maryland just walks on with Savani's Utel. So, yeah, a great job from her. Yeah, great flash from Yoru, like you were saying. I've never seen that before <laughs> off that angle either. Great use of Utel, but regardless, UMD comes away with it, putting them at 11. Yeah, and I mean, Pace needs to figure out something correct. They, they tried the operator, but unfortunately, just not quite going to be able to find the pick. Going uh, going for another another pick, and yeah, you. Uh, you know, we were talking about forcing stop earlier, but now, I mean, it's an operator no shield situation. I, but I mean, clearly it works out as they're able to find the pick on the first foot. And you know, know you might not exactly have shields, but at least you can get healed up by the uh, by that sky anyway. So it, it, it kind of works out as shields. She probably ended up uh, being able to take around 150 damage this game or uh, this round. Looks like UMD will fast rotate A as they're able to secure the plan. They're going to force Pace to retake. Looks like two of them are headed from Heaven, one with an Operator in hand who's dropped down right underneath Heaven. Trace finds the first. Uh, UMD's looking for the second. They know the Operator is in hand, so I think they're trying to play more close range uh, than anything as it looks like Trace is going to push up. But regardless, the Operator is able to find one and only 10 HP this Deadlock has to work with here. Um, do you save the Operator? Do you try to find a couple... Um, we'll see what the Stunlock decides to do. It looks like they will opt to save um, the Operator. Yeah, that that uh, that Cypher Cam is being so pesky. And I mean, what are you gonna do? You have to, uh, you know, you have to turn around and find out. We saw earlier where it is, and it's like hidden behind two separate walls in a little like slit. And uh, I, I mean, it, it's kind of impossible to find that. It, you know, especially in the heat of the moment, all the adrenaline. You have to focus on so many things. So it's gonna it gives UMD all the information that they need, and uh, Maryland now up twelve to five. It felt like it's throughout this series that it had that um, Pace was in the driver's seat, and UMD was just trying. It was doing everything that they could to slow down Pace, and uh, you know just try to survive, like I was talking about. But now suddenly, you know UMD feels like it's in. Uh, they're in the the driver's seat, and Pace doesn't know what to do. I think you're exactly right. All of a sudden, UMD just kind of found their rhythm, it seems like, and they're only one round win away from taking away a series that didn't look like it was going to go their way to start things off. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it looked like if anybody if anybody was going to you know, run away with the game, it was going to be Pace. But it was certainly surprising, and now, I mean, I think that Pace is just, just kind of scrambling. They look a little lost now as they just send the Brimstone off by himself to get the, to get the orb, and he's going to fall for it. As, uh, you know, UMD already has the plant down. It feels like the round just started, and uh, Pace is already forced to do this retake for the series. Yeah, and they have to work with only three players against Maryland 5, and there is a Brimstone ultimate for the side of Maryland to work with, which will be um, a huge pain to work with in a post-plant situation. I'm sure that's what they're saving it for. Yeah, they're able to they're able to find uh, they're able to find Laura with the Abu. It was a beautiful shot, but again, I mean, there's just no time. Even if they get on spike, I mean, we, the ult's coming down. There's gonna be uh, Brimstone Util. There's gonna be Viper Util, and frankly, this, this, this game's over. There's nothing that Pace can do. Is they're gonna fall. So Bonnie finds two, and that's gonna be GG. Great perseverance from UMD. I think that is the word that sums up this series. They really stuck with it. They didn't get in their own heads. They shook off the adrenaline to begin with, and they came in strong where it mattered. Yeah, absolutely. This really was just a game of endurance, I feel like. Um, I think the pace kind of won it, uh, kind of was trying to play this game like a sprint, and UMD just able to, to outrun them, and eventually pace just wasn't able to keep up.
Well, we hope you guys enjoyed this series. We certainly enjoyed casting it. It was really exciting. Um, glad Ly or Lotus rather was able to make it into the studio for the first time. We loved having them here. So thank you guys so much for watching and we hope to see you back again soon. Yeah.